Good afternoon, councillors. Good afternoon, members of the public, everybody who's joining us at this meeting tonight. It is our budget meeting tonight, the 24th of February, and I welcome you all. And um, I will start the meeting by asking Archdeacon Peter Lennart to lead the chamber in prayers. Good evening, Peter, and thank you. Good evening. Thank you. Uh, it's always a pleasure and a privilege to be invited to pray at the start of these meetings. I hope my prayers are helpful. If you have, uh, if you profess a faith other than a Christian one, I hope that my words can be used in an appropriate way for you. And if you do not profess a faith, then I hope that they might be a good moment of reflection. Let's pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for our island. We thank you for its beauty, both in physical geography and the community who call it home. We pray for our council this evening, for its elected members and all its members of staff, especially those who have worked so hard during the current pandemic. We pray for guidance and wisdom this evening, especially around budgetary conversations with the additional pressures this last year has brought. We give thanks for the work of our health and social care workers, and especially those who are currently administering vaccinations so successfully on our island. And we continue to pray for those affected by COVID-19, for those who are unwell, for those sick in hospital, for those struggling with long COVID, for those who have died and those who mourn their loss. And we give thanks for the hope of the future, the future for our nation and our island, for a hope of reopening new opportunities and ongoing community cooperation. And so we pray for all conversations and discussions that will be taking place tonight that the atmosphere will be one of unity, service and peace. Gracious God, you guide everything and everyone in wisdom and love. Accept the prayers we offer for our nation and our island. In your goodness, watch over those in authority so that people everywhere may enjoy freedom, security and peace. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Thank you for those kind words. Thank you very much, uh, councillors. Can we have apologies first? I have received apologies from councillor Adrian Axford, and I must notify you that councillor Axford is not well. He's in hospital, and he had a small stroke. His family is supporting him, and we wish him well, and our thoughts are with him at this time. Councillor Chapman has got connection problems. I see uh, Councillor Chapman is here at the moment, but we may lose you throughout the meeting and we see how it goes. I know this is a historical problem we have. Are there any other apologies received? None. Thank you. I would like to advise both members of the public and councillors and the press this meeting has been recorded and broadcast live. Mobile phones should be switched off unless it's been used for this meeting. And all participants are reminded to allow for a slight pause prior to speaking for the technology to catch up. And a reminder again to please mute your microphone if you're not speaking and also have your camera turned off unless you are speaking. Uh, and only speak when I ask you to speak. Thank you very much. We will now go to the agenda. And uh, the first item on the agenda is the minutes from last meeting held on the 20th of January. Are members happy for me to sign the minutes? If somebody could just indicate. Thank you. So I'll ask your patience for a couple of minutes, just so while I sign the meet, uh, meeting minutes.
Thank you very much. Thank you, councillors. Number two on the agenda is declarations of interest. Uh, does any member have any interest to declare on items on the agenda which relate to any items that we may discuss tonight? If they are not, if you are declaring anything, please indicate so. Councillor Braiding. Uh, Councillor Ferks, would you please turn your camera off? Otherwise, we lose quality. Thank you very much. Thank you. And the leader, your camera's on as well, so. Apologies, Chair. I was just uh, checking. There were, I think there were two or three councillors trying to get in. Councillor Bertie. Um, I don't know if Councillor Nicholson did. And um, I did see Councillor Brady, but I think Councillor Brady's in now. I think, yeah, Councillor Nicholson, I saw, I saw him earlier. He's on, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Number three on the agenda is public questions. Uh, we received four questions. The first one is from uh, Mr. Paul Crisolon from Sandown. The question is following the Council's recent notice inviting applications by Friday, the 19th of February from interested parties for the operation of Brown's Golf Course and Cafe at Sandown. How many bids for the lease have been received by the closing date and when will the successful bidder be chosen? Could I ask the leader to respond? Yeah. Thank, you, Thank you, Chairman. Chairman. Um, I'll just wait for the uh, live link to transfer. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Despite uh, in excess of 50 expressions of interest being issued, no bids were received by the deadline of noon on Friday the 19th of February 2021. And accordingly, there is no date for confirming the successful bidder. The Council will review the position in relation to the future operation of the site. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Leader. The second question is from Mr. Mike Locke from Freshwater. There is currently one hour of free parking at Newport Harbour North and South for vaccine patients attending the vaccine clinic at the Riverside Centre. Will this be extended to the Council's Moa Place car park for the vaccine patients attending the vaccine clinic at the West White Sports Centre and, Com Sports and Community Centre? And if not, why not? Uh, I'll take that again, Chairman. Thank you, thank you, Leader. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, the response is the Isle of Wight Council has not been asked to provide free parking at the Moa Place car park for patients attending the vaccine clinic at the West White Sports and Community Centre. It would be happy to consider this if it were approached by the NHS to do so. Thank you. Uh, I think if we can, we should. Thank you, thank you, Leader. The next question is from Mr. Mark Voller from Sandown. As part of its COVID response in 2020, the government indicated that 20 mile per hour speed limits are being more widely adopted as an appropriate speed limit for residential roads and through streets in build up areas. Streets and town centres near schools are made safer for pedestrians and cyclists where 20 mile per hour limits are adopted. Another benefit of, benefit of slower traffic is, is streets become more pleasant and people friendly, which may help promote the revival of the island's commerce and tourism as lockdown rules are eased. What are the Council's plans to implement 20 mile per hour zones more widely across the island? And if I could ask the leader again to respond. Uh, thank you. I'll just wait for the uh, live link. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. The response is that the matter of 20 mile an hour speed limits was recently discussed um, by the Policy and Scrutiny Committee for Neighbourhoods and Regeneration. Uh, they're actually their subcommittee, the 20 mile an hour speed limit task and finish group. The impact of regulations about fitting of speed limiters in new vehicles for 2022 was part of the group discussion. An island wide speed limit review is currently being progressed that will provide data to inform the development of 20 mile an hour speed limits and zones. This should be concluded in the autumn. 
The scrutiny committee full report is attached to the paperwork and the following recommendations were approved. That the experiences of other areas such as Lancashire, Border Council, Bath and North East Somerset, Sefton, Faversham and Portsmouth in implementing 21 hour speed limit zones be looked at as part of the proposed review of speed limits. That the review of speed limits should include an understanding of the potential environmental impact of 20 mile an hour speed on air quality and carbon emissions, as well as noise. The potential enhancement of walking and cycling conditions, which 20 mile an hour speed may bring together with issues such as health benefits and increased sociability. Not to be constrained by historic accident statistics in determining 20 mile an hour speed limits or zones. If an otherwise strong case can be made for the introduction of such a restriction in a specific place and the ongoing improvement in car technology such as speed limiters. And also a recommendation that the cabinet member for transport and infrastructure should ensure that the funding is made available for the speed limit review to be undertaken during 2021-22 and that a report be submitted to the policy and scrutiny committee on the time frame for the proposed review of all the relevant plans and strategies that will link into the new transport, low, sorry, local transport plan, so that it can have the opportunity of providing input before they are finalised. Thank you, Leader. That's quite helpful. The next question is from Tracy McKish from Ride, <coughs> which is on similar levels as the first question in the previous one. And the question is the imminent arrival of new technologies such as speed limiters on vehicles, plus the government policies and associated grant funding to encourage more people to walk and cycle, makes the speed limit for vehicles all the more vital. Moving to a reduced speed limit of 20 miles per hour is an essential building block. Who recommended in making our towns and villages safer, more attractive and healthier places to walk, cycle and spend time? How is Alawai Council working with the local communities to implement the 20 mile per hour speed limit? in places where people live, learn, shop and work. Thank you, Leader. Thank you. Sorry, I'll wait for the... Thank you, Chairman. I think um, looking at the um, response that I can give, it's almost exactly what I've just given to the previous question. So I'll ask officers to send a written reply to the questioner who will have heard me speaking live anyway. Thank you. Thank you, Leader. That's good. Uh, so um, everyone who's submitted a question will get a written answer as well. Uh, that is the last of the public questions. Uh, number four on your agenda is uh, the chairman's official announcements. I have submitted a written report and it is an agenda in your agenda pack. Um, and I've also included a separate report from the Youth Council, the chairman of the Youth Council of the other way. And um, I think it would be good to have that included in all future meetings. So we can keep in touch with our youth and so we know what they're doing as well and it will build a bridge between us. Uh, I would like to announce that also I only found out today that uh, ex-councillor Lyndon Jones who was the mayor of Basingstoke passed away earlier in the week and he was mayor of Basingstoke from 1999 till 2000. I did send our condolences, condolences to Basingstoke and to uh, Lyndon Joseph's family earlier today. Thank you. And that concludes my report. And if we go to item number five on your agenda, which is a leader's update report. Uh, thank you. Leader, you've got five minutes. Thank you, Chair. I'll just wait for the connection. Um, hi, everyone. Dave Stewart here, leader of the Isle of Wight Council. And today I present my leader's report, the written content of which is in uh, presented at item five of the agenda um, and in addition I have this verbal update. My report provides a comprehensive picture of the council's work since our last meeting and addresses key areas of council activity including our continued response to COVID-19. Bear with me a second Ch Chairman, I, I know it's just uh, disappeared from back there now. Um, preparation of, for the local elections in May, the latest position on the island deal, formation of New Hampshire and the Isle of Wight Fire, the New Hampshire and Isle of Wight Fire Authority, effective implementation of compulsory purchase orders, the impact of our climate change and the environmental strategy, 
the regeneration of Newport Harbour and revision order approval, which has been now received, a budget that is linked to community safety and regeneration, the island's involvement in the local enterprise partnership free port bid, involvement in adult social care, uh, sorry, adult learning for young people and apprenticeships, and the provision of schooling and food vouchers for young islanders. Now, this is not an exclusive list, but it does present a picture of the huge range of activity that our council officers have delivered in addition to COVID-19. Excuse me, Leader, can I just interrupt you briefly? Yep. Uh, to ask Councillor Hobart, would you please turn your camera off? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Leader. OK. Um, it is a testament to our staff that they have done such, so much in such, short, uh, such difficult circumstances. And I hope all members will join me in thanking them all for their hard work at this difficult and challenging time. However, the continuation of these and other service provision is predicated on financial sustainability. The lawful and balanced budget which this administration has put forward for consideration and approval later in this meeting is essential to that outcome. So it is important, I report, that whether it is for our coastal communities, island visitors or the wider island communities, community safety on our roads, at home or when out living our daily lives, enjoying our areas of outstanding natural beauty, or our coastal communities is and will remain an absolute priority. This is why this administration is determined to make the necessary decisions required to ensure the safety of the community, whilst at the same time helping to create the, uh, the environment for economic recovery. That's the conclusion of my report, uh, together with my written report, which is on file, and I am happy to take uh, and answer any questions. Uh, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Leader. That's quite informative. And Councillors, you have uh, the full report in your back for information. Um, we have got questions on leaders' report. Uh, we got, I've only got 15 minutes for that. And the first one I have to speak is Councillor Brody. Good evening, Councillor Brody. Would good you like evening, to ask the leaders' question, please? Thank you. Thank you, Chair, and good evening to you. I'd like to ask a question about regeneration. On the 18th of February this year, the leader tweeted, we need to regenerate our county town. Ideas to follow. Given that his administration has been in power for over four years now, does he not think that suggesting that ideas will follow at this late stage in an administration is an indictment of how little this council has achieved in terms of regenerating not only Newport, the county town, and the rest of the Isle of Wight, is he not actually ashamed of that tweet? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Brody. Uh, Leader, your response, please. Uh, oh, thank you, Councillor Brody. The short answer is no, but um, I would like to highlight that actually we've been doing a great deal already for our county town. I'm sure as a Newport councillor, he's familiar with the Newport uh, master plan. He will also be familiar with the um, recent approval by the Secretary of State of the Harbour Revision Order. He'll also be aware of the funding that's been secured from um, the Historic Towns Fund. And he'll also be aware of the ongoing work we are doing with uh, a number of councillors in relation to the roads around Newport, as an example. And uh, I know he's aware of the successful outcome of the work that was done on the St Mary's uh, roundabout, which has now led to uh, a junction which by all accounts is working very well. And I hope with his support uh, and that of other local war members in Newport, at the appropriate time, we'll be able to progress the wider infrastructure plan. So um, I feel that we are doing a great deal for Newport. I absolutely would support him and Councillor Price and any other councillor who um, wants to see Newport reinvigorated um, after this awful pandemic and I can assure him if I sit in this seat in uh, a few months time um, he will have my full support on that. Thank you Leader. Councillor Hastings you indicated to you have got a question for Leader please give your question. I'll just wait for that red line right thank you. Um, would the leader agree with me that since the removal of marker boys by the previous administration in 2015, swimmers have lived with fear and anxiety of powered watercraft and that is, is good news that we are now reinstating them thanks to this administration's budget proposals? Thank you, leader. 
I'll just wait for the live. Thank you, Councillor Hastings. Uh, you raise a very important point. And can I start by acknowledging the steps you have taken already to develop our coastal community strategy? Community safety remains a key priority of this administration and it is reflected in our budget proposals. As part of this process, we want to ensure all our coastal waters are safe and when the time is right to encourage visitors back to the island once again to enjoy our beaches, our coastal waters and our coastal communities and in so doing regenerate the island economy. One of the key economic offers of the island is our fantastic coastal towns and beaches and I'm pleased that our regular dialogue with our town and parish councils continues to enable us to work together for the good of the island and our budget proposals will enable that approach to continue um, and including the point you make about the coastal boys. Thank you, Leader. Thank you, Leader. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor PC Wilcox. Yeah, you hi, Councillor Stewart, can you confirm that you wrote your report, please? Leader. Do you mean physically wrote it in pen? Uh, the answer is no. Did I uh, endorse and approve my report, which is a very comprehensive document? Um, yes, and this is supported by a range of officers from the council who I asked to give me details of their respective areas and also from cabinet members who provide the detail for me. So it is a team effort. Thank you very much. So then my question is this. Um, on item number 28. Just bear with me a second, I'll get the page up. Thank you. <laughs> Councillor PC Wilkos, is, is that one question? Is that because you no, can't come back to another question? This is, this, I just needed the confirmation. So, yes. Councillor Stewart. Uh, is this about food vouchers? Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, thank you. OK. I surely cannot be the only councillor who felt offended by the use of the word pleased when stating 4,500 food vouchers were given to vulnerable children. It shows a total lack of respect to them. Indeed, it speaks volumes of the Conservative government that we are in this situation. As you agree you wrote the report, I ask you to hold your head in shame and remove the word pleased and replace with given or issued. Thank you, Councillor Stewart. Well, thank you, Pete, Councillor PC Weircox. I can tell that um, our meeting this evening is going to be somewhat more political than perhaps previous ones. But actually, I think members would be pleased to know, no being the key West Point, that over four and a half thousand food vouchers have been issued to support vulnerable children. In addition, 160 care leavers have also been provided with financial support through food vouchers. Um, I can get you further detail through Councillor Braiding if you wish, but I think when we are, as you rightly pointing out, having uh, young islanders in difficulty, it is right and proper that we should support them. And I would have thought that all members would be pleased to know that we are doing so. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Stewart. Uh, I have got Councillor Lilly next uh, with the Council. Could I please ask? that councillors keep to the question, keep it concise. We only have 15 minutes for this item. Thank you. Uh, th uh, thank you. Uh, it's in relation to item 17. Um, you refer to the uh, about low carbon uh, island. Yeah. And obviously the government's Green Deal, which is being administered through the Isle of Wight Council and the Footprint Trust is obviously part of that. My question is, uh, are you aware that there is only one contractor that can deliver that scheme on the island and that all other contractors will have to come from the mainland? And does the Isle of Wight Council have a view to actually uh, get the, this balance by getting more approved contractors on the island? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lilly. Leader. Councillor Lee, thank you. The short answer to your question is no, I'm not aware how many contracts we have um, and I don't personally get involved in the procurement, but um, you make a valid point and it's an interesting point and I would expect Councillor Hastings to have picked your point up um, and if you have any further questions or concerns, I'm sure you will find out and answer them for you and thank you for your amendment. 
Thank you, Thank you. Councillor Thank you, Stewart. Uh, next for the question is Councillor Ward. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Yep. Um, Leader, would you agree with me that the motion in November 2020, which was supported by 38 members of full council, to invite the Cabinet to explore the introduction of mobile average speed cameras as part of a solution to a problem of road safety and community safety supports the inclusion of this subject in the budget. Thank you, Councillor Ward Leader. Uh, thank you, Councillor Ward, for raising this important point. Um, as I have just indicated in my written and verbal report to full council, road safety and community safety sits high on the administration's list of priorities. And I'm sure there are many examples from across the chamber highlighting the public's wish for this council to respond. Now we know speeding through villages is of concern to the community and there is an expectation that the Isle of Wight Council will address these concerns. We also understood from the support for the motion on the 18th of November, which is available on YouTube, um, it was supported by members from across the chamber, including Councillor Andre, Councillor Garrett, Councillor Brody, and others. Unfortunately, that commitment seems to have been forgotten as members oppose, opposite have prepared their alternative budget proposals. So let me remind members of what this investment will enable us to provide. Some years ago, Hampshire County Council explored the acquisition of mobile average speed cameras, which could be positioned at specific locations in towns and villages where abuse of speed limits and other speeding activities were taking place. Working with local parish councils and local community groups, equipment was installed in appropriate places to address local community issues. It's important to remember that these cameras are mobile, not fixed, they're home office approved and linked to the AMPR system. Motorists breaking the law are captured on camera and fines are issued. Experience on the mainland showed that many offenders were caught and the actual cameras were supported by use of dummy cameras. It created the opportunity for communities to bid for camera placement and provided a safer option to speed watch cameras in terms of the operators. As once in place, they don't require physical operation. What they do require is effective back office support. Disappointingly, all fines are currently go to the police and the Home Office. However, as part of this initiative, we would look to see the government through our MP look to change this. We all know that speed kills. And we all know that the increase of walkers, horse riders, cyclists and other road users on the island, this form of innovative community safety initiative would be a positive response to improving road safety on the island. I recognise this proposal is in the early stages of research, but is happening as I indicate. And mobile speed cameras will also provide the ability to deal with motorcycles and other road users who abuse speed restrictions. They would be added to the level of reassurance, for example, to local communities when we consider proposals such as the International Motorcycle Event and other events involving our roads. I've discussed this proposal with the Hampshire Police and Crime Commissioner and in due course, officers will bring options to Cabinet for further consideration, which is why I'm surprised some council members now wish to abort this proposal in the budget. These mixed messages do little to reassure our community. The community safety remains a priority for this council. Thank you, Leader. Thank you. We have Thank only three minutes left and we've still got Councillor Fuller next and then Councillor Howe. Chair, Chair, I have a point of information. Sorry, Councillor Brody. Yes, that please. Takes preference. I'd just like to point out to the Leader that he listed councillors who have removed the speed camera proposal in their budget amendments. That did not apply to me and he gave my name. I'd ask him to withdraw that. Thank you. Councillor Brody, Councillor Stewart. Wait for the. Yes, no, uh, Councillor Brody. Just for clarification, I identify. I went through the YouTube um, video actually and saw that you, along with well, 38 councillors, um, supported the motion. Um, I certainly am not saying that you've got it in your uh, personal amendment, and I do acknowledge that. Thank you. Thank you. If we could have uh, Councillor Fuller next, please. Thank you, Councillor Fuller. So we come back to you as we are running low on time. I'll take Councillor Howe next, please. 
Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'm, I've not usually renowned for asking questions about my own area because I've, you know, sometimes I think it's wrong. But I would like to ask um, Councillor Stewart whether he consider supporting my area of Totland in the to help further holidays support for residents and you know um, for the area to provide equipment and make their beaches. I'm not asking for large sums of money. All I'm saying is support we need and backing to help make it. We've got a lot of businesses moving into Totland and we need the backing of the council. This is these businesses all about the employment. Thank you. I hope you'll be able to support it. Thank you, Councillor Howe. Councillor Stewart. So, Councillor Howe, thank you very much for your um, very important question. It builds on the question that uh, Councillor Hastings asked me and highlights that sometimes we forget the whole of the island and focus on one area. Uh, Councillor Hastings referred to the boys in the bay, but having had a briefing from you recently, I am really, really impressed with the efforts that are being made locally in Totland and elsewhere um, to rejuvenate the whole area, both economically and in terms of safety. Um, so yes, I fully support what's happening. I'm happy to meet with the group um, or, or people from that area who might like to further brief the council. And I'm grateful for you raising the question, Councillor uh, Howe. Thank you, Leader. And could you also pass on to Councillor Hastings? We appreciate his support as well on this. Thank you. Yes, I'm sure he's listening. Thank you very much, Leader. Thank you, Councillor Howe. Um, that brings us to the end of leaders' question time. Yeah, Councillor Fuller, would you like to come back if you are online? I know historically we've had problems with your connections. No, sorry, we've lost you, I think. Thank you, Councillor. We will move on to item number six on the agenda. And as budget and council tax setting for 2021 22 and future years forecast, item six on the agenda and public fact documents from pages 25 to 150. I will ask the leader to move that all budget proposals to be debated. And I'll ask for a second there as well. Yep, uh, Chairman, um, I formally move that all the budget proposals, including the amendments, are debated, and I look to Councillor Andre or another member of the Council to second that proposal. Second, please. I'm happy to second that. Councillor Andre, thank you very much for that. Thank you. I will ask the leader to speak on the budget proposals, uh, item six on the agenda and it is to comment on any other proposals that has been published. Uh, you have 15 minutes later. Thank you. Councillor Phillips. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Councillor Phillips, sorry, sorry we Stop moved on. Please. If you could put a written question into the leader, he will respond to you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Chairman. Uh, when you're ready, I'll start my presentation. Thank you. Uh, Members, following the arrival of the coronavirus pandemic that has devastated all of our lives and dominated everything we have done over the last year, we find ourselves having to deal with perhaps the most challenging circumstances local authorities have ever faced in trying to set a lawful and balanced budget. So the focus of our budget proposals this year are to ensure a financially sustainable position for this council, which underpins three important priorities. Firstly, to ensure as a council we're able to continue to keep our community safe because community safety is the number one priority. Secondly, to create an environment and a financial plan through which we're able to deliver the economic recovery of the island. And thirdly, to continue towards achieving our vision of the island being an inspirational place in which to grow up, live, work and visit. The key elements of our budget proposals that support these priorities are laid out in the budget report. And I shall shortly invite my colleague, Deputy Leader Stuart Hutchinson, to explain the proposals in more detail. However, before I do so, I would like to remind everyone that this is the fifth budget this administration has delivered since that fateful time four years ago, 
when the then leadership of the previous independent administration walked out on the island without warning because they could not or would not set a lawful balanced budget. That decision or indecision left this council facing bankruptcy and potentially having to go to government with a begging bowl just to keep our essential services going. But this is no longer the case. As the ruling administration, we know we must act responsibly in making our budget proposals to full council. Not for us, the flight of fantasy around restoring dotto trains instead of keeping our community safe, or one-off raids on reserves letting council finances hang in the balance for the future. Today, under this administration, more than 60% of our spending is on children's services and adult social care, and rightly so. Today, under this administration, the books are balanced. Today, under this administration, we also present a financial plan that deals with the challenge we face today and provides a medium-term financial strategy that deals with the requirements of tomorrow, securing our long-term financial future. In setting this budget, we face some difficult choices to achieve the 3.5 million of savings required, but we have delivered on this requirement. The good news is that this budget also ensures we're able to continue to protect our community going forward with key elements such as the inclusion of a COVID support fund of over £14 million to protect people against the worst impact of COVID and to help address important priorities such as long COVID, mental wellbeing and ongoing business support, all forming part of our budget. This means we're able to continue important investment in our transformation programmes, which is making a real difference. For example, in children's services, we are 18 months into a strategy to ensure that all social workers have capacity to deliver effective, strength-based support and interventions, enabling more children to live safely at home. This prudent business decision will save the council up to 2.4 million over the next three years. Or the additional 6 million of funding we propose for our statutory services, adult social care and children's services, which means we will be protecting the most vulnerable in our community. Our budget also puts us on course to reduce our outstanding budget deficit to £9 million, which equates to saving of £3 million per year, recoverable over each of the next three years. Now, this figure is well down from the £7.5 million of savings target we were left in February 2017, just before the independent leadership walked out. In fact, our budget plan today, we have identified that the new savings required for next year will actually be just 1.8 million because we have had the proper medium term financial plan in place, which further reduced the deficit. By 2024, this council will have no outstanding budget deficit to cover, which means we will be well placed to further support a growing economy whilst at the same time continuing to keep our community safe. This is prudent management of the council's budget in action, prudent financial management needed for a sustainable financial future. Let me now turn to capital, to our proposals. Our budget will see us invest 9.6 million from our capital resources, which will leverage a further 46.5 million of external funding. That's a total of 56 million pounds. Bear with me a second, please. accurate figures, £56 million of capital to be invested in the island's future. This figure includes over £40 million invested in coastal protection, £6.4 million in our schools, £2.9 million in affordable housing and a new biosphere centre, and a further £1.3 million in highway improvements, which include investment in sustainable transport. Our budget also secures general reserves at over £8 million, reserves that we know are essential when faced with responding effectively to something as huge as a pandemic, which we have been able to do. Our budget secures the future of the Isle of Wight, and I'll now pass to Councillor Hutchinson to complete the presentation. Councillor Hutchinson, thank you. Thank you, Leader. <laughs> I'll just wait to go live. We can hear you. We can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, OK, uh, I'll press on then. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Leader. You, you have outlined some of the key points that allow us to secure services uh, for the most vulnerable, as well as invest in the future of this island's economy, on, on which we all depend. 
despite your invitation to go through our proposals in more detail, um, there are 125 pages of closely reasoned proposals representing hundreds of hours of work from uh, chief officers and cabinet members. And I'm sure you'll all be relieved to know that I should confine comment to a few salient points. Uh, I couldn't do justice to all the proposals in a few minutes anyway, but you will all have read them. Uh, the leader mentions that we had in that first budget to deliver savings of seven and a half million pounds, but there was also a need to achieve a further 11 and a half million in the following two years. We have done that. We used some of the money provided uh, in that first budget to create our very first transformation reserve of a million pounds, and we have since increased it to meet demand. Having a solid fund to enable change has paid real dividends. A few examples will illustrate that. In children's services, the use of this fund has enabled changes which will save around £2.4 million whilst delivering a service of equal or better quality. In adult social care, this fund allied, allow, allied to others enabled us to reduce the uh, bed blocking, I think the proper term is delayed transfer of care, at St Mary's to a level where at one point it was zero. Imagine what the pandemic would have done had we not had that improved capacity. Joint investment from our transformation fund uh, together with capital funding has allowed us to bring in agile working. That has had two critical benefits. Firstly, that we had equipped all our staff who were able to work remotely to do so, either from home or alternative bases. And I know you will all recognise that without it, we could not have continued our services so successfully during the last 12 months. And also because of that fund, we have been able to reduce our office accommodation, saving us a, around a million pounds over five years with an ongoing 200,000 a year. Uh, a cabinet members responsible for those portfolios may wish to com uh, comment later on those points. The transformation fund at present is now cut down to just two million and it's essential that we repair it to ensure sufficient capacity to meet the undoubted challenges and changes we shall see over the next year. <clears throat> By careful management, we've now reached the point where we can say whether we achieve further support funding with an island deal or not, and we are confident we shall. We have put in place in this budget a route that brings us during the life of the next administration to the point where the savings targets will all have been met, not by massive reductions in service, but by re-engineering what we do and how we do it. We can then concentrate on targeting money solely for improvement. I know that you are all aware of the incredibly difficult issues we've had to cope with in the current financial year, with huge losses of income and very substantial additional costs. To bring the current year into balance, we adopted a stringent deficit recovery strategy, and that has required the raiding of every spare bit of cash we had. Without the resilience of the reserves we had put in place over the last three years, and also raiding that transformation fund, we would currently be in an overspend position. We would have had to recover that by further savings in the next financial year. We also know that the coming year is likely to be as difficult and resilience in the budget is essential, which is why we have built it in. I would say that in rather less challenging times during the independence term, most conservative councillors, including myself, supported their budgets, although we did not agree with all aspects of them. I would hope for similar support from independent councillors in these most difficult times. I'll now touch upon a key investment we've included. Others have been mentioned by the leader, including the huge investment in coastal safety and security, which has required match funding. As the leader says, we have managed to put in place a 14.2 million COVID recovery fund, 
over three years. It's a good start. And it's as much as we can manage with all the other calls on the council's fund. However, I doubt it will prove to be enough. Over the next three years, the council will be spending some 1.2 billions on services for our residents. Against that, the 14.2 million is just a start. So it is critical that we keep the council's funding for services in good shape. And that is why we are recommending that the 2% basic increase is complemented by the specific funding of 3%, which is essential to cover the increasing costs of adult social care. That increase represents uh, £1.37 pence per week for a band C property. We use band C because most houses on the island are at that level or below. Uh, and it's and it's 137, however many taxpayers are resident in that property. And if there's only one occupier, it's a pound a week. We're not alone in having to raise the 3% purely for social care. Every other council with that responsibility has had to do it. 3% yields 2.5 million pounds. Apart from the fact that it is sorely needed, how could we possibly sustain an argument to government for an additional 6.4 millions if we reject the 2.5 that they would let us have? A last point on additional funding is that uh, since we had to trim the council tax support scheme to enable us to meet the increasing number numbers of claims, we have received some additional government support that adds a further 1.4 million to that fund and so puts back far more than was removed. Finally, a brief comment on the alternative budgets put forward. Firstly, I'm grateful that two of the three proposals recognise that we must provide additional funding to meet the additional pressures on adult social care. Whilst there is some reshuffling of budgets, hence the saving in specific uh, social care areas, we have put in more than the tax increase with 4.4 million of new funding. Even this does not meet the overall forecast need. I'll briefly touch on each of the alternative proposals. Um, the Lib Dem and Councillor Brodie budgets both seek a a similar increase. One minute, of the, I, just, sorry to, uh, I, I think I would just about do it in a, a perhaps two, two minutes, Chair, if I Thank you. That's fine. Uh, give you my discretion. Hard to get through so much uh, in such a short time. Um, those those uh, budgets seek an increase of 2% of the crem fee, crematorium fees, uh, just a small proportion of the overall costs of a funeral. We must provide a high quality and reliable service and that requires income. We've seen huge pressures on those facilities during the pandemic. What I can say we'll do is we will review and benchmark uh, the, the costs so they're in line with good quality providers elsewhere. We don't want to be the highest cost, but we won't provide a lesser service. Um, the Lib Dem amendment also seeks a number of minor reinstatements, which uh, really reflect the amount of use or a change in operating positions. And I'll leave cabinet members to comment should they wish. I'm much more worried that in that budget there's half a million pounds of uh, new expenditure and I'm extremely concerned uh, that this is paid for by reducing the transformation funding and the re removal of the funding for safety speed cameras. I can't agree with the former for reasons I've explained and I'm astonished that having voted for safety cameras a few weeks ago, the funding is now removed. Um, so we have a U-turn there. Um, I, I, I can't either agree with Councillor Brodie's proposal, which simply pushes savings into future years and leaves us with no reserves. So in conclusion, uh, I can't support those budgets and I would recommend uh, that members accept the um, published budget uh, as set out in the pages on agenda item pages 67 to 70 of the report paragraphs 169 thank you, and thank you very much thank you chairman sorry i overran a bit of time i will uh allow everybody else the other proposals to uh use the time they need as well as long as it's within the reasons 
Uh, Councillor Garrett, could I invite you to speak on the budget proposals and any suggested amendments that may have been proposed or to comment on any other budget proposals that have been published? You have 15 minutes to do that. Thank you. Well, thank you, Chair. Um, in speaking to the Liberal Democrat Group's amendment, first of all, Councillor Barry and I would like to record our thanks to the finance officers who have, as always, advised us with professionalism and courtesy. And, and could we also give thanks to those officers, senior officers and others who have over the last four years advised us with similar professionalism and courtesy on each of the four Liberal Democrat amendments that we have moved. Chair, the COVID pandemic has meant this has been an extraordinarily, extremely hard year for all Islanders. My thoughts have always been with those who have lost, lost loved ones both to COVID and to other causes, but whose mourning has been affected by that. And I include my, myself in that being unable to go to the funeral of a friend. And for the rest of us who thankfully may have avoided COVID itself, um, but have seen ourselves deprived of our partners for many weeks, our family members for many months, um, others who have lost their jobs, their businesses, those who have seen their school children, um, school in incredibly disrupted. Um, and so it is quite right that the council's top priority has been on the public health response to the pandemic and on supporting local communities through through these this nearly one year. It must, of course, continue to, to be so for, for some time to come, and I feel sure that there will be very little disagreement amongst us on, on these public health actions. But for what we might call our usual or, or normal or day-to-day -day services, I think um, the Liberal Democrat Budget Amendment again shows that there is a, a better approach than the one taken by the Conservative administration over the last four years. Just over two months from now, Islanders will go to the polls and elect a new Isle of Wight Council. And the Lib Democrat Amendment highlights the priorities of a future Lib Dem led Council of enhancing island communities, boosting the local economy, and playing our part in tackling the climate emergency. The context, of course, of, has been for another four years of a diminishing council budget. And it is notable that there is nothing in the speech from the leader and deputy leader um, condemning the Conservative government, which has driven down the funding available to local government, which has forced upon us the cuts that have been uh, cruel in many ways. And, and, and I despair of, of, of Conservatives who, who won't call out their government more, more fulsomely. So whilst I welcome £50,000 to evidence the case for an island deal, the leader will understand that once lockdown is over, I won't be one of those out in the streets dancing with joy because I have seen the devastation to the island that has been wrought by a Conservative government that has failed to fund local government properly. On that note, Chair, I will open with a discussion of the Liberal Democrat initiatives to, to enhance our communities and protect them from Conservative cuts. Liberal Democrats believe that the, the best decision making comes when they're working in partnership. Our town, community and parish councils are closest to our communities. So again, we propose a £100,000 community public round fund to support joint initiatives with these councils to enhance community lives. These could be examples could be new play equipment, enhancements in parks and public spaces or road safety schemes. It could even be jointly on average speed cameras, but more of that later. The COVID pandemic has seen exceptional work done by island community and voluntary groups. So we propose a, a community tra resilience transformation fund to make sure that we capture as much as possible the best practice in partnership and community work that we have seen over these last 11, nearly 12 months and enable it to be rolled out to other areas of the council's work. Chair, Un under the Conservatives, the island's library surface has suffered many cuts. As Liberal Democrats, we believe libraries sit and, and have an important role at the heart of our communities. And so we would stop the Conservative cuts, a total of 38,600. Uh, leader, Deputy Leader of the Council referred to this as minor. I do not think 
giving commitment to local libraries a minor issue. They sit, as I say, at the heart of our communities. Chair, the Conservatives propose raising more money from a massive 7% increase in crematorium and cemeteries fees. That's way above inflation. And this is just completely wrong. It's scandalous to think that we would put up these charges at this time. So the Liberal Democrats would limit the increase to 2%, which is broadly in line with projections for inflation. So Chair, strong communities require strong economies. Uh, the COVID pandemic has taken its toll on island businesses and jobs. Government regional agencies and the council will and are, of course, working hard to address this. And as the council has previously observed, the island benefits from an entrepreneurial culture with micro businesses accounting for 85% of local business. So again, consistent with last year, the Liberal Democrats propose a, an enterprise fund to support uh, local entrepreneurs. Chair, last, last year in November 2020, the council backed a motion brought by Councillor Brodie aiming to bring back retail vibrancy to our county town as we emerge from the pandemic. So in line with this, we would provide up to £175,000 towards 30 minutes free parking in streets and car parks. We would also not go ahead with doubling the overnight car parking charge. Two island attract attractions have been targeted by the Conservatives for cuts. Again, described as minor, these, these, these attractions um, are perhaps of little interest to a, the Conservative administration, but these are the Newport Roman Villa and Dinosaur Isle. We would not go ahead with these cuts as lockdown eases and when people can visit attractions, maximising opening hours feels to us to be a priority. Chair, the COVID pandemic is the most acute of two great crises facing the world today, and the other is that of, of climate change. And in July 2019, I note that uh, this council made a cross-party supported declaration of a climate emergency. And so to support this and consistent with our proposal of last year, the Lib Dems would set up a £275,000 climate emergency initiatives fund, providing the additional monies for community driven initiatives such as extra tree planting, expanding areas of pollinator friendly plant uh, planting, providing electric car charging points and further extending our cycle networks. There are many other examples of how councils have reacted to the climate emergency in positive ways. Chair, of course, all proposals must be paid for. Councillor Hutchinson always speaks so um, it, uh, passionately in this area. And of course, again, the Lib Dem budget amendment is financially sound. Yes, we would redirect about £600,000 that the Conservative leadership wants to put and lay to rest in the transformation reserve to some extent. It already has a decent balance, but you will note, of course, that the things I put forward have transformative effects and those are immediate and not just waiting uh, with money sitting in the bank when it could be doing some good. And yes, we would also reallocate the 300,000 set aside for two speed cameras, allowing that money to be spent more broadly on supporting our local economy and on joint initiatives with parish community and town councils. These could, as I said before, include speed cameras if no other effective road safety measure can be put in place. And of course, uh, the leadership of the council will be aware that speed cameras are always seen to, to some extent to be the last option once you've exhausted all other ways of permanently making our roads safe. The very fact that you trap somebody in a speed camera means you have failed to some extent in road safety and we need to make those permanent changes and prioritise them first. The public will have also asked why these cameras cannot be funded, at least in part, through the Police and Crime Commissioner. And we'll also want to know that the cameras being considered are the best value for money. And I've done some research on this that suggests speed, average speed cameras could be got um, at sums consistent with what we have put aside for the joint initiatives um, with local community, town and parish councils. So Chair, this budget amendment from the Liberal Democrats shows the vision and direction that a council led by us would have and would take. It would work in partnership to enhance communities. It would work with business to boost the economy and create jobs. And it would work with all to tackle both of the crises that we are facing. The acute crisis of the pandemic, COVID-19 pandemic, of course, the chronic crisis of the climate emergency. And finally, I would say, Chair, that um, 
all budget amendments from opposition groups are indicative of the broader thrust of things. Of course, if I were in Councillor Stewart's position, I would have brought a very different budget with a much wider range of initiatives consistent with um, our vision. I put forward an amendment that I hope that may at least entice a couple of members of Councillor Stewart's group to respond positively and vote for it. But above all, the residents who may be watching in and those who will not be, can be assured that our budget amendment is underpinned by a philosophy. It's underpinned by the liberal principles set out in our party's constitution, and that is to build and safeguard a fair, free and open society in which we seek to balance the fundamental values of liberty, equality and community, and in which no one shall be enslaved by poverty, ignorance or conformity. So Chair, I do hope that members are opposite in the virtual sense, we'll consider uh, this amendment favourably. We'll see that it can deliver a budget that is lawful and financially sound and also be a budget that is better in tune to the desires of island residents. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Garrett. Thank you. I would ask Councillor Brody to do his proposal next, but before you come in, Councillor Brody, I would like to say something here. Yeah. I've allowed Councillor Hutchinson uh, leeway because of difficulties uh, through the virtual meetings and I will allow everybody else the same privilege. Uh, there's been some comments made here, some totally uh, not right. I don't think, uh, I think it lowers the standard of the council here and, and we, sh we shouldn't do that and I wouldn't put up for that. I will allow each one. When you get, when you have five minutes left, I will show you you've got five minutes left and if you've got one minute left, I will tell you you've got one minute left. When your time is finished, I will say so, but if you're not finished, I will allow you to finish. There's no no reason to comment or make, make comments. Thank you very much. So, Councillor Brody, I invite you to speak on the budget proposal and any suggested amendments they may have proposed and to comment on any other proposals that have been published. And you have 15 minutes for that. Thank you. Thank you for that explanation, Chair, which I, I, I take on board. Chair members, as a democratic socialist, I have engaged fully in every budget round over the last 16 years, except last year. But what Councillor Stewart has outlined tonight is the most cynically uncaring budget I have seen since the first Tory austerity budget of his former boss, the infamous David Pugh, and the rest of the Tory gang back in 2011. At a time when most people are fearful for their futures, due to the seemingly never-ending COVID pandemic, to shake down council taxpayers for a 5% council tax increase shows a complete lack of empathy for ordinary people. And to use 3 million of that 4.25 million increase on capital projects that can wait or as funding for pet schemes is just disgraceful. And let's not forget the Tory increases over the previous three years a 6% increase in 2018, 4% in 2019, and last year, 4% again, all above inflation. So much for the party of low tax. In addition, the Tory plan to rip off the bereaved at a time of national pandemic with a 7% increase in crematorium charges is just entirely offensive and morally indefensible. And to all of this 10 weeks before the next elections is presumptive in the extreme at a time when the Tories should be preparing to clear their desks in their top floor suite. They seem to want to hammer Islanders for perhaps not re-electing them. The last four years have seen a Tory regime that is entirely secretive and opaque. A Tory regime that rules as if it had an overwhelming mandate when it was actually elected with just 40% of the vote. Indeed, seven sitting Tory councillors had less than 40% of the vote in their ward. I had more than 70% and most opposition councillors had majority vote shares. Perhaps Islanders will wake up to this fact on May the 6th. Chair, I have a number of proposals that would be fair to Islanders at a time of national pandemic. They constitute a lawful and balanced budget proposal as verified by the Section 151 officer. More significantly, I propose 
that this council recognise the difficult future that islands face and reduces the increase in council tax next year by 3% to a more acceptable 1.99%. This proposal would mean that 2.6 million of additional savings will need to be made in the following two years. But, as I have already said, we should not be tying the island down to a huge council tax increase whilst the pandemic and its consequences are ongoing and with elections in just 10 weeks time. Indeed, we should cancel instead, sorry, we should cancel this year a small part of the ambitious suggestions of the leadership for capital spending by deferring a 1.8 million contribution for works to the Cows Gurnard Sea Wall and recognise that the transformation reserve for pet projects actually stands at more than 3 million, not the 2 million that is claimed, and save transferring nearly a million there. Make note that the proposed capital programme for next year is £56 million, including £40 million on coastal protection, the highest programme funding for a very long time. Reducing that coastal programme of cows to keep the council tax increase down is, in my view, entirely considerate of island taxpayers at this particular time. My proposal also seeks at a cost next year of just over £220,000 to reduce the Tories proposed an opportunistic increase in crematorium fees from 7% to 2%. Next, to remove their proposal to increase overnight parking charges by 100%, a ridiculous proposal made when we should be doing everything we can to encourage people to use our towns on an evening once the pandemic is under control. And where is November's unanimous call for a levelling down of car parking charges for Newport in the Tory budget? Despite requests for an ad update, I've had nothing as yet. I also seek to keep Newport's Lord Louis Library, the island's county library, open six days per week, as it is now. I know the Tories are the barbarians of politics, but this is surely a step too far. And finally, to retain local council tax support for town, community and parish councils. Why punish local councils who have taken on so much that County Hall abandoned because of Tory austerity? In Newport and Carisbrook, one of the big two local councils, this was worth £2,500 this year, a significant amount to them, a piddling amount to County Hall. Chair, on the street, in phone calls, in my email inbox and on social media, my proposals on the council tax increase have been universally welcomed by ordinary islanders, fearful of the post-pandemic future when the government says it will put their arms around them. That is clearly not happening and it is for us, as the island's parliament, to do it instead. The Chancellor of the Exchequer has racked up hundreds of billions of pounds in debt during the pandemic. Surely we too can defer some of the administration's proposed expenditure next year and keep council tax as low as possible for islanders. I suspect there will be a number of Conservative councillors who are uncomfortable with some of their leadership's proposals, particularly with elections just 10 weeks away. Elections where voters will be regularly reminded of the repeated large Tory increases in their council tax over the past four years. I urge them to join me and hopefully other opposition councillors in supporting my proposals and perhaps just saving their necks. Something that may help persuade them is a seeming flaw in their administration's own proposals regarding beach huts that will unbalance their budget. In Appendix 3, Item 20, they propose to make nearly 16,000 a year from St Helens beach huts. However, I understand that contrary to the Chief Executive's assurances to Scrutiny Committee, there continue to be legal problems with an existing leaseholder that will prevent this proposal. And this was admitted to a recent recorded meeting of St Helens Parish Council by the Cabinet member, Councillor Tyndall. Finally, I am very disappointed that two opposition groups, the Island Independents and the Lib Dems, whilst making some interesting suggestions that I would normally support, have seemingly accepted a 5% increase as inevitable in their own amendments, perhaps symbolic of the lack of their effective opposition over the past four years, leaving someone like me isolated. I would say to them, 
it is time to get off your knees and speak for the island majority. They will not forgive you if you do not take an opportunity to reduce the Tory proposed council tax increase. And remember, these are named votes. It is certainly the case that there are other people actively preparing to move the Tories in May, and it is better not to be seen supporting ridiculously high council tax increases if you want to be returned. Chair, I formally move my proposals as the best decision for ordinary islanders, for working islanders, for struggling islanders, and for pensioners living on fixed incomes. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Councillor Brody. We go on to the next speaker, which will be Councillor Andre. Councillor Andre, if you'd like to turn your camera on, thank you. And speak on the budget proposal on any suggested amendments they may have proposed and to comment on any of the other proposals that have been published. And you have 15 minutes for that as well. Thank you. Councillor Brody, would you turn your camera off, please? Sorry. Thank you, Chairman. Well, it's fair to say that it's been a challenging year since I came before this council to present our budget amendments last year. It's become a much used, perhaps overused, phrase of the past year, but we are indeed living in unprecedented times and we have all been challenged without exception to a greater or lesser degree. Therefore, surely council services, both now and in the planning for the future, should reflect that changing landscape. People who were only just managing before the pandemic struck are now experiencing a loss of income, either through being furloughed on a percentage of their original salary or without employment at all, due to the many businesses that have sadly folded, unable to continue against the backdrop of economic ruin. Add to this our island factor, which is all too often seeing us paying a premium for goods and services, and it's not hard to see that we are indeed in a financial crisis. Inevitably, it would be those hardworking individuals and families at the lower end of the pay scale that will be hardest hit. The budget that is about to be set this year is probably one of the most important ever and it's crucial that we get it right. We can't afford not to. We have to align our priorities with the needs of our island community and rethink our priorities as a local authority, realigning our spending to reflect the current situation whilst looking ahead to our future economic recovery, fully engaging with residents in the process. The current Conservative administration who have been the custodians of the public purse since 2017, say that they are exercising sound financial management. I would somewhat disagree with that. Out of potential borrowing of 100 million at preferential rates from government, 35.1 million has to date been drawn down and invested in commercial property, although that fund has now been withdrawn. The properties acquired are in Salford, Aylesford, Oxford and Southampton, but none on the island. The rationale for this, I seem to remember, was that a minimum yield of 4% needed to be achieved to make these uh, um, acquisitions viable. The estimated rate of return for the next financial year of these investments is only 1.97%. Just think what that investment could have achieved for our island economy. So let's take a look at the proposals before us. In the substantive proposal submitted to us by the Conservative group, we have indicative savings and proposed revenue generation listed in the following areas. An increase in crematorium and cemetery fees by 7%, reduced funding and reduced opening hours for our libraries, the closure of the mobile library. Also reduced opening hours for certain council run heritage centres popular with tourists. Increasing the potential cost to town and parish councils who employ an environment officer. An increase in net revenue by employing additional traffic wardens. 
doubling the charge of overnight parking charges, a reduction in the maximum level of local council tax support to residents from 70% to 65%, and the reduction in the local tax support grant for town and parish councils. And all of this against a backdrop of redundancies, unemployment and the failure of many island businesses. I have to say it's hard to determine the total revenue figures, perhaps because they're hidden in plain sight. So where are the priority areas for their spending? We have a higher demographic than the national average of over 65 year olds. And I think we would all agree that we need to prioritise our adult social care services to both support and enable independent living wherever possible and to ensure a good quality of life for all. We also need to provide a consistently high standard of education for our island's children, especially those that have um, been homeschooled for such a long time now. And also our young people and work alongside and support our teaching staff who have risen to the challenges of the last year so willingly and professionally. I'm pleased, however, to see that our recommendation from last year of committing funding to compulsory purchase orders has in fact been included in the Conservative proposals this year, as there are far too many derelict buildings scattered across our beautiful island, and this problem really does need to be addressed. What I cannot justify is the spending on non-essential items that could be postponed or withdrawn at this time, such as further investment in video conferencing facilities, yes, the 300,000 on two speed cameras, and the replacement of council vehicles for electric models when the price of electric models is likely to fall in the next couple of years, not to mention the continued investment in the floating bridge. The long awaited and much promised island deal in the region of 6.5 million seems to have been whittled down to 50,000 pounds, which is ring fenced to carry out a government study into the island factor replicating the comprehensive Portsmouth study carried out in 2016 and commissioned by the independent group administration at that time. It would also appear now that we will have to bid for a share of a levelling up fund without any guarantee of success, quite different from the original assurances that we were given. Also, regeneration plans kickstarted by the independent group administration and progressing well to fruition before the 2017 election appear to have been kicked into the long grass. There's plenty more, but I'll leave that to some other members to highlight. And so we look to the other proposals put before us where there is some synergy, as Councillor Brody alluded to. There are many similarities in the reallocating of funds. Yes, cutting the spending on the two speed cameras but in a changing climate with changing priorities, we have to try to soften the financial, economic and social blows that will be levelled against our residents if the Conservative proposals are actioned. The Liberal Democrat group are making a valiant attempt to reverse many of the cuts already highlighted in the Conservative proposals, whilst, yes, maintaining the increase of 4.99%. We know that there is very little room for manoeuvre, but that's why it's even more crucial that we get our priorities aligned with the needs of our island residents. The proposal submitted by Councillor Jeff Brody has similar aims, but seeks to reduce the overall increase of 4.99% by 3% to 1.99%, offsetting this by reducing the contribution to the Transformation Reserve and yes, committing funding from future years from general reserves. This concerns me because the financial, social and economic impacts of the pandemic are going to remain with us for many years to come. And this strategy of offsetting against future funding carries a higher level of risk as outlined by the Section 151 officer. And so to our own proposals, in restoring the local tax support grant to town and parish councils, we will enable them to ease the burden on local residents. They are best placed to work at grassroots level 
to identify the individual needs of our communities. Town and parish councils in collaboration with local community groups have become, in many cases, the first line of defence for residents struggling to make ends meet or to access shopping or prescriptions while shielding. Closer collaboration with town and parish councils both now and in the future is a fundamental principle of our group and we continue to work hard both at a county and more local level. We know that there are serious problems with the supply of social housing on the island, yet there are over 430 empty properties that could pot potentially be made available with the right support. Our innovative scheme to offer affordable bounce back loans to owners who would otherwise not be able to afford the costs of bringing their properties back up to the required standard will enable more island residents to have a place to call home by releasing more properties onto the local housing register. In looking at how we would reallocate funding in this year's budget, we have cons consciously avoided quick fixes and have looked to the future with the establishing of a sustainable transport fund Sorry to interrupt you. You have five minutes left. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, a sustainable transport fund offering much funding to town and parish councils and community groups for initiatives such as the setting up of community bus companies, the potential for the return of the popular Dotto trains, although they would be electric this time around, and other sustainable transport initiatives. We intend to fund our alternatives by reducing the replacement of ICT equipment, withdrawing the proposed investment in video conferencing, withdrawing the proposed installation of two speed cameras, yes, at a cost of 300,000, and by deferring 50% of the investment in the council fleet vehicle replacement programme where electric vehicles were due to be phased in, as we believe that they, the cost of electric vehicles will indeed reduce over this time. Finally, in closing, I would ask the members of this council to consider carefully how they vote this evening in light of the options before us. To vote with their conscience, not their political allegiance, for the benefit of the island residents whom we serve. In presenting our alternative budget, we show that although we know that our finances have been pared to the bone over the recent years of austerity and impacted heavily by the pandemic, there is still scope to prioritise our core principle of putting island residents at the heart of everything we do, both now and in the years to come. I therefore commend the Island Independent Group's budget amendments to this council and ask for member support across the piece. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Andre. Uh, next, I invite other group leaders to speak on the budget proposal and suggested amendments. And Councillor Julie Jones Evans, do you have a proposal to put forward? Do you, you wish to speak? Councillor Jones Evans? Councillor Jones Evans, are you there? Would you like to speak? No, thank you, she says. Okay, thank you very much. Any other member wish to speak? If you would like to indicate, and uh, I will call your name, and each of you will have three minutes to speak. And the first one I have on the list is Councillor Fuller. Councillor Fuller, would you please turn on your camera and your microphone? Thank you. No. This, there we go. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Fuller. You made it this time. You need to unmute your microphone. Thank you. Unmute that. If you unmute your camera, your microphone, please. Thank you. There you go. Thank you. Do you mute it again? Just unmute again. 
There we go. That's Am it. I connected? Thank <laughs> goodness for that. Thank you. I, th I think I think next time I'll just open the windows and just shout through 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 that way. I think you put I'm more likely to be listened to that way. Um, we are in in interesting times, and um, you know it makes us no pleasure to it gives us no pleasure to look at these budgets and some of the savings that um, we we have to make. And I would like to say thank you to the officers for their work and to the cabinet members to put us where we are. I think it's a very good starting point, but I think one of the things that needs to be recognised by members on the other side of the chamber or the other side of the island is that we don't have the opportunity as opposition groups, as opposition members, to look into detail at the recommendations that come before us. Um, you know, there, there, there are a lot of issues that we've raised in the past as a group, and one of the certainly one of the things that I would like to see is how we manage car parking across the island, how we manage long stay car parking across the island. Again, there is not that level of detail within the report for us to get our teeth into. Um, you know, we've made the decision, you know, one of the things that we also need to do is look at commercialisation of services. I know the relevant scrutiny committees are looking at that. They've looked at it in the past, but how are we going to make our, our um, uh, how are we going to balance our books? And I think that is something else that we need to be able to look at as well. Um, you know, I, I know what um, the leader was saying and the deputy leader was saying about the £300,000 for mobile fixed ca uh, mobile cameras. Again, there is nothing within the report that says those cameras are mobile. As far as we are concerned, they are speed cameras and there is nothing to say that they were mobile or fixed. But I am I am relieved to see that they are actually mobile cameras now. Um, one of the things that we get quite a lot of grief from from our residents is that we spend too much money in County Hall. You know, this is, although it's capital expenditure, I would like to see that money being spent back into our community. I know you're just about to shut me up, um, Chairman, so I will, I will um, close my report there and um, say that it's with regret that um, I will not be supporting the um, the uh, administration's budget this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Fuller. <laughs> if you turn the camera off as well, please. Will do. Councillor well, Midland. It'll probably take half an hour, but um. Thanks. That's very quick. <laughs> Councillor Midland, you're next, please. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. You hear me okay? Yes, sure. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, I haven't prepared a brilliant speech, but I just want to made a few notes. Um, clearly, we're you know under. A, horrific circumstances this year and I've got huge respect for uh, both the cabinet and, and the officers for this very difficult task that they've had of putting this, this budget together and, and actually we've had some very good suggestions from, from uh, my side, the opposition side of the chamber as well. Um, I want to thank everybody for their comments on that really. Um, my, I want to make some, a general observation really, it's very very difficult as an opposition member and Paul's alluded to this, to make uh, serious um, suggestions when we have so little information to be going along with. I mean, for example, if you don't have any, and this is not a fault of this particular administration, this is something we should do as a whole, is the one for the whole council, is that when we look at our budget, we need to see what our current revenue expenditure is in detail. And then we could sort of drill down and see some of the things that we could perhaps stop doing, which are not so sensible, in order to save money to do the things which are crucial. So it's very difficult to do, to know what we're doing without those kind of figures. Uh, we also don't seem to have any figures on current capital investments either, which also makes those difficult to evaluate as well. Um, I mean, there's a good example. I've been going on for years about the fact that we have two Island White Council owned and run leisure centres on the island, which are not statutory services at all. They're just an add on, it's an extra. And they should have been gone with all the other statutory services and turned into a community interest company or devolved in some way to local control. As, for example, we have with Waterside and Ride and, and West White Sports and uh, Community Centre in Freshwater, which are then funded by their local parish precepts. So people in Freshwater and Ride are paying twice now. They're paying for the leisure centres in Medina and the Heights. And they're also paying for their own leisure centres, which is totally unfair. Uh, it's completely wrong principle. We should be embracing the third sector and devolving any 
non-statutory powers to other bodies, as we have done generally in, in other areas. But it's very difficult to make, make a case for this this evening because One I have no ago. idea. Thank you. I have no idea what the uh, expenditure is um, or the income on the, on the, on the leisure centres because we don't have that kind of information. So it's so uh, very difficult. The other thing that stuck out at me, um, and this was a bit of a shock, was in Appendix 5, it seems all right. This year we spent £222,000 on the floating bridge, which I'm not surprised about. And this falls next year to £15,000. And then it goes to nothing for four years. And, and it, I mean, I, I'm not sure if the administration is expecting the second coming, because that would be the greatest healing operation I think any of us can ever imagine. We need to remember that the, f the ferries are an ongoing thing. We need to be constantly investing in them. See, from 1896 to 1982, there were always two floating bridges for the obvious reason that they break down a lot because they travel back and forth 220 finish, times a day. Finish your... OK, well, that's really what I say. I think I'll call that a day there. But, you know, we need a second uh, bridge. We need to be investing in a second bridge. Point taken. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, next to speak is Councillor Hastings. Thank you. Victor, you back here. Thank you, Chairman. Your three I'll minutes. Yeah. Just wait for that line. Um, thank you. You may need to stop me at some point, but I'll do as, as quickly as I can. Uh, I cannot support any of the amendments on offer, and not just because the 151 officer calls them less prudent with additional financial risk. Um, the transformational fund you've heard from Councillor Stewart earlier, how important that is. I could not support anything who wants to get rid of that. Speed cameras, ever since I've been a councillor in Central White, my local residents have been fearful of the terrible speeds up and down the military road and asked me to try and sort something out with this. Well, it's taken a while. Finally, there's something in the budget that could help and should help. There's a lot of point in putting in a static camera because people will speed, slow down, speed up again. But with average cameras, they've got no chance. They will be caught if they do not observe the rules. Uh, I just happen to have right in front of me, the, uh, because it's got most of the things in my portfolio, the Liberal Democrats amendment. Library Book Fund, they have put £10,000 back in. Well, I have to tell you, uh, the book replacement programme is more targeted to residents now because it's much more digital with audio books, etc., especially last year. So that's a reason for that 10000 not being needed now for the book fund. And it's already still 107000 for the coming year. The uh, Newport Roman Villa, uh, Councillor Garrett says as a, as a, a Newport community councillor, he's very keen to do something and make that better. Well, so am I, and I'm doing something about that in the background, and that's in process right now. Um, however, that's no thanks to Newport Community Council, uh, who didn't support, who didn't want to put funding into it. They didn't want to take it. They were offered it. They didn't want to take it. They didn't want to put funding to it. So I'm doing that another way. And I am trying to make that better for Newport and everybody else. The mobile library is fine. Put 3,600 back in. The Liberal Democrats have forgotten that if they put that 3,600 back in, they then need to buy a new vehicle to support it, which would be £50,000. At and, and uh, sorry, someone was coming in there. Um, climate emergency, very, very nice to see. Climate emergency initiative fund, 275,000. However, I would point out that just recently we have a, we've obtained a grant from the government for 2.6 million to decarbonise our council buildings, which I think is superb work. Uh, sorry, someone keeps coming in there. Um, so yeah, so in general, Chairman, uh, there's not much that I can support in the in these amendments, so I will not be supporting any of them, and I will clearly support the administration budget. Thank you very much, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Hollis, are you next to speak? Thank you, Chairman. Um, just to make uh, just a, a few comments. Uh, first of all, with Councillor Brony's uh, uh, budget, uh, we had the usual expected vitriolic uh, political stuff from Councillor Brody. But uh, just looking at his budget, I'm very worried about his proposal to um, to, to, to postpone the Cows Gurnard Coastal Scheme. Has he actually looked at the, the, the railings, for example, on that stretch of um, 
uh, that stretch of coastline, they're absolutely rusting away. They've had lots of repairs, but it's an ongoing project that does rely upon government funding as well. And there is timing concerned uh, that this time uh, that time has to be respected. If you miss if you miss the timing on that, then you don't get the government funding as well. Um, uh, the also I um, the local council tax uh, support for town and community parish. I know in Newport we've got so much money sloshing around that we don't actually know what to uh, not to do do with it. Um, and so we can we can uh, actually you know, that's OK. But um, uh, it's, it's all very well. I, I, I just find that amazing. However, I've looked, I've looked over the past years and added up all the times that um, Councillor Brody has suggested that we, uh, we cut reserves. And if we had followed his instructions, we'd now be £12 million down on uh, we've lost of £12 million of reserves. So that would make us um, you know, somewhere about five million pounds uh, in, in minus reserves. Uh, it, it's ridiculous. You can't keep keep on suggesting these things. Uh, however, there we are. The only other thing I'd suggest with the, with the Island Independent Group, I think starting talking about the floating bridge, I find it rather ironic there uh, since uh, we inherited uh, their floating bridge, but they uh, either got it wrong or didn't um, actually monitor properly. And we're le all left with the with the uh, the problems that we have had in the past five five years with that. Anyway, there we are. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Councillor Wallace. If I could bring in Councillor Ward, you indicated to speak, Councillor. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, I, I just wish to raise a couple of points, uh, and and basically one to clarify a situation. I keep hearing three hundred thousand pounds for two speed cameras. Um, that is just not correct. The £300,000 in the budget line is to look at various options, including mobile speed cameras. And people keep quoting two speed cameras. Actually, that is very inaccurate and the public are being misled by that statement. OK, it is for us to serve our people who are com constantly complaining about speeding. And I defy any councillor to say to me he doesn't have a, or he or she does not have a speeding problem in their ward. Thank you, Chairman. One, the second point is um, Councillor Andre's comment about encouraging this administration to put aside money for um, compulsory purchase. I served through the last shambolic independent administration. I have as you probably everybody knows, derelict buildings in Sandown. Did anybody want to listen about compulsory purchase amongst the independent group? Not at all. OK, just completely blanked. It took a Conservative administration to come into office and start that ball rolling. I just wanted to put the record straight, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ward. Councillor Brading, you next to speak, please. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, I've listened very carefully to all three alternative budget proposals because I'm a you know, level headed person to think things through. Um, I will not be supporting any of them um, for various reasons. The uh, Liberal Democrat one and Councillor Brodie's motion uh, talks about um, reducing the transformation reserve, which really, really concerns me. The transformation reserve may not be understood by every councillor. Um, I'm sure Councillor Gary and Councillor Brody understand it, but it's absolutely vital for the future of the council on the island that we continue to invest in this. Councillor Stewart and Councillor Hutchinson have already shared the example, but Children's Services is going through an eight, we've started an 18 month uh, into a strategy to ensure that all social workers have the capacity to deliver effective strength based support and interventions to enable more children to live safely at home. I defy any councillor to think that's not a good idea and should be you know, cut from the services. I'm sure it's a slip of the tongue from Councillor Brodie when he referred to transformation uh, children are not pet projects. Councillor Brodie and I have worked together closely recently on a several issues and I'm sure he didn't mean children are pet projects. But the reason we can do this type of strategy 
is that Children's Services is now rated good in every aspect by Ofsted. You can only do a transformation programme from a position of strength. And it's through this administration that we've now got that excellent Children's Services rating. But the financial part of this is the investment this year, which will be around about £400,000 from that fund, will save the council up to 2.4 million over the next three years. So the question would be a rhetorical question, really. Does anyone know where else we can save two million pounds from? Because that's what it comes to. If we're investing to improve services, to save money for the future of this island. And again, it's a prudent business decision that we do that. Um, regarding the independence um, budget, there's some interesting stuff in there. But my concern, um, I am a town councillor for the ward of Sandown North. Uh, and I get numerous phone calls from people I know in the Yavland area really, really concerned about speeding along Culver Parade. It's an area, it's, it's a real, real um, racetrack. In fact, it's going to be used as a racetrack uh, by the Sandown Sprint event next year. So for their budget to propose no speed cameras on what is considered, I consider one of the, you know, um, most dangerous stretch of the road in Council Andre's ward, as it turns out, we do need those speed cameras in action on the island to address, as Councillor Ward has just said, the speeding issues. And please don't start me on dotto trains. You know, I'm sorry, that's just a ridiculous idea. Um, we had those, I believe, but the independents took them away. So um, don't start me now. So I will be supporting our budget and voting against the other three. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Brady. That's good timing, Abbas. Perfect. Councillor Abraham, you are next to speak, please. Thank you. Uh, thank you, um, Chairman. Yes, it's, I think it's been quite an interesting debate. And one person I would like to, to actually thank was actually Councillor Bedland, because I do think he actually made one or two sensible suggestions and showed himself not to be um, up in the, the sort of politics of, of everything. This tonight is my 29th uh, budget that I've had to, uh, to sit through. Um, from borough councils and um, to the Isle of uh, Island Council. And I have sat through many uh, different administrations and I've even had seen in the past uh, uh, budget, uh, the Liberal Democrats actually raising it by 14%, the uh, council tax. So I don't really take uh, a lot of, of what they take uh, say actually too seriously. Um, Councillor Andre raised about the, um, the the empty homes. Well, we were actually left with no policies or policies that were out of date that didn't enable us to be able to um, com compulsory purchase. So that is why uh, it was so late. It was something that we've been trying to do for the last three three years and have only just been able, able to do it. With regard to putting money into um, uh, empty properties, you know, the, these are properties in the main that are owned by people as investment properties. And I don't see why we as a council should actually put money in, or in as uh, to try and actually uh, as a bounce back loan or, or what, whatever she's, uh, what, what she was calling it to, to bring back those em empty properties. Quite frankly, if they we are looking to compulsory purchase if they don't bring them back in, into use. I think that that is uh, the, the right and proper thing that we should be doing. And just, just on one, one other point, nobody's raised anything about um, building uh, social housing on the island, but for the first time for many years, we've actually reached over 100 new uh, social houses th this year. And over the next two or three years, it, well, hopefully it will be up around 150 per, per year. We're actually starting to make inroads into our woefully inadequate housing for for uh, people that don't have anywhere where to live, and um, you know, and I, I I assume that Council Mosdal will will come back in and we'll be saying you know what we've done for the um, for the homeless shelter. I'll leave it at that, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. That's good news about the housing, the social housing. I think we need that. We're desperate for that. Councillor Whittle, you next, please. Thank you. You've got three minutes. I'm just waiting for the camera. We can hear you, yeah. That's it. 
Okay, so a couple of councillors have mentioned a few things as part of my portfolio. So speaking back to Councillor Andre about this, you know, the independent side of the regeneration team. Yesterday, they hired two officers. They didn't have any projects. I think the only project they had was one, which was the floating bridge. And I don't want to talk any more about that. But we now sit on 25 projects ready to submit to government for various funding when it so arrives. It's worth noting that the 137,500 budget saving listed for the regeneration and development is actually some of the income generated from the successful implementation of the regeneration strategy. The report reminds us that the regeneration and business development that results continues to be the key feature of the medium term financial strategy. And as projects continue to move forward from planning to delivery, we will see this revenue dividend increase year on year. More businesses paying more business rates, paying better wages also means more council tax revenue, making sure we have the best possible environment to attract and grow business investment in a key part of what regeneration is all about. Despite the pandemic, we continue to make great progress in creating this environment for investment and we stand well placed to bounce back in recovery due to the great foundations that have been laid so far. And I'd just like to thank my officers for all the work and all the progress that's gone on in the middle of them having to down tools three times to process and allocate funding to businesses on the island to support grant funding. It's also worth noting that in addition to the direct contribution to the budget, this administration has levered in over 50 million of government funding to the island over the last 18 months to support our regeneration and infrastructure ambitions. Whether investment in our high street heritage or a pioneering work live development at Branston Farm or the investment in ride interchange and island line, every pound we invest as a council will deliver six pound in other public and private sector investment. Given the effect of the pandemic, I think it's fair to say that if we didn't have a regeneration programme up and running, we would be running around to try and pull one together now to get us out of this lockdown. I'd also like to refer back to Councillor Medlin and I thank him for his kind words. And I just want him to know that uh, leisure centres is now my portfolio. And since taking it on, I asked officers to try and get some funding for the West White and the Waterside Pool. And my officers discovered that, because we was gonna give them some of our funding and we discovered that the funding wasn't for local authorities. So we specifically adjusted and wrote bids and we approached the West White and the Waterside Pool and asked them if they wanted to take part and let us help them. And my officers actually wrote bids for the Waterside Pool. They was gonna start one on the West White Centre, but they didn't want to proceed. But I would like to tell everyone tonight that they've been very successful. And I'd like to thank my officers for the hard work they did on our behalf. And they've actually won £81,000 for the Waterside Pool. So hallelujah to that one. Thank, thank you, you Councillor Whittle. Thank you very much. Uh, we actually ran out of time there. Councillor Pease, you next to speak. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you, Chair. So I just want to touch on a couple of things that have been mentioned. Firstly, the crematorium and the uh, the charges being put up for a crematorium. Actually, you know, a 7% increase sounds a lot. It's not. Um, we're not talking about bereavement services as a whole. We're talking about purely the crematorium charges. 7% only raises us or keeps us level with the medium um, around the southeast of England. So we're not charging anything more than most other uh, authorities or, or equivalent authorities are doing. Um, so that's put that one to bed. Secondly, I want to talk about um, digital transformation, really, because um, IT, I do recall, is one of the things that opposition members uh, wanted to cut uh, last time round. Um, if they'd have done so, there is absolutely no way on this God's earth would we've been able to carry on and function as we have. Connectivity. Um, the improvements uh, are led by our own island tech uh, champion, White Fibre, to bring gigabit internet speeds to every part of this island by 2023. It's a once in a generation commercial investment um, and it's complemented by other work by another island company called Go Internet. Um, together, 
um, they're doing some really, really good work. Um, the importance of this means that this island uh, will be the one of the world's most connected with some of the highest internet speeds going, and that is a must in a digital and information driven economy. Now, that might not mean much to a lot of people uh, and you know, a few people said that to me, well, what does that matter to me? Well, actually, it's got huge significance. Uh, perhaps the easiest way to visualise this is to think of some of the issues that we will have all had over the last year uh, when working from home. Uh, watching iPlayer or Netflix whilst the kids are playing for, uh, Fortnite in two different bedrooms. Um, ultra fast broadbands means and 5G will mean no buffering, no egg timers on the screen, no frozen or jerky teams meetings like we're all experiencing. It means instantaneous downloads of films, videos and files and unlimited speeds uh, and broadband uh, bro um, bandwidth restrictions means that business can just function and get on with making money and employing people without any hindrance from anybody else. Ultra fast connectivity means we can boost and capitalise on digital skills. It boosts our economic growth and that's proven uh, and it changes the, the way we can deliver public services to the benefit of it all. Our digital line strategy is a key part of our recovery plan. That doesn't feature in other members um, plans so far, they seem to have forgotten the fact. Now, just to illustrate just how important digital transformation is for this island and what we've been able to do as a conservative administration, um, I'm going to give you some figures. Now, it doesn't escape anyone. There's been some dramatic changes in the way we all work. Sorry, guys, I think we run out of time on yours. Uh, can I can I have one minute, Chair, please? Okay. Um, We've, we've delivered 446 deliveries of ICT equipment into staff homes in the 90 days prior to March 2020, uh, March 2020, we held 800 teams meetings. In the last 90 days, we've done 23,000 almost. None of that would have been possible without us being in charge. And if uh, Jonathan Bacon and his cronies and his friends sitting opposite get the chance to get back into power, all that hard work will be gone. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Lilly, you next to speak, please. If you turn your camera on and your... Uh, and thank, you. thank you. Thank you, Chair. And your camera off as well. Thanks. Uh, uh, thank you, Chair. Um, firstly, it was very good news uh, from Councillor Whittle, uh, and I thank the Council officers in supporting getting funding for Waterside that will actually help them uh, hopefully remain open because a lot of facilities like that uh, have been really threatened uh, in the long term future and, and we need to keep those facilities at our grassroots and it's been the grassroots and the communities right across the island that have actually been there for the people uh, to cope and manage this really difficult time. Uh, I will be supporting the three amendments as they address and highlight some very important issues. I totally d disagree with uh, Councillor Peace in regard to the crematorium costs because the Isle of Wight Council bereavement services, which includes the, the, the crematorium, actually makes a profit. It is the most profitable of any of the income generation services. It is very sad that this is out of uh, uh, the sadness of loss of life, but that is the reality. And it actually has got, I would argue, sufficient profit to actually go in and upgrade the crematorium and the site. So I do not agree that they, the um, there should be a 7% increase within that. I support the uh, Lib Dems budget uh, as well as the uh, Isle of Wight Group's budget because they have uh, innovation and they particularly re uh, recognise um, the need to actually have town and parish councils really at the heart of creating and the big word is jobs. We need jobs because we are going to have people who are going to have lost their incomes, have lost their businesses. 
we have to invest in our innovators, our small business owners, in a, such a big way so that we create and be the island that actually created the islander plane, the hovercraft, uh, the, you know, the first electric car. And sadly, as you know, John Aykroyd, who was the inventor of that, uh, recently died. We have great engineers and we have great talent on this I island and we need to invest it. So we do need the kind of initiatives like the climate emergency, the community public realm, the enterprise funds, community resilience transfer. We have to invest in our people. And we need to give them empowerment. And actually, it is town and town and carriage councils <laughs> like in Ride and in Newport that are actually are putting innovative schemes into place and creating future jobs. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you very much for that. <clears throat> Councillor Stevens, you've been waiting patiently. I have indeed. Thank you. <laughs> if you can come in, you've got three minutes as well. Thank, Thank you very much indeed. I'll, I'll be as brief as possible as usual. Um, I want to go back to some of the initial statements from uh, the leader, and it was that uh, Councillor Bacon and Stubbins re resigned. Appreciate that, but I didn't, and neither did my colleagues of the Island Independent Group at that time. I've moved on, I'm an Island Independent Network member now, but it doesn't mean to say that we should actually say that everyone walked away and took their bat and ball home. We were there and we actually, in that year, produced a full legal <coughs> balanced budget as approved by the Section 151 officer and was actually um, commended on. So let's put that one to one, one side. Let's also talk about Council Ward and Council Ward's came forward with um, a statement about uh, uh, comp uh, the uh, CPOs on um, various uh, properties. Now, I was leader. I never got the tap on the door from uh, Councillor Ward. I don't know if he brought it up in meetings or mentioned to us. If it is, is it on record? Because we were there for compulsory purchase orders uh, at that time, the same as we are now. And I'm, I just want to put put that bit to bed. But what I'd like to go on to, and I know I've only got three minutes, is that um, speed cameras should be funded by the uh, Police and Crime Commissioner. We took on as a council the parking um, violations and what have you, and it's cost us money. We might have made some money, but I'll tell you what we've cut. It's, it's cost this council in administration and and in employees. Um, the speeding problem should be uh, uh, agreed and taken forward with the Police and Crime Commissioner by the uh, relevant uh, uh, cabinet, of, uh, cabinet officers and uh, members indeed. Um, I just want to touch on uh, one of the areas or two of the areas really. Um, the first one was that when you came in to uh, four years ago, and even just prior to that, when uh, Councillor Dave Stewart was the leader, he had 17.5 million of ASDA money. Now, I've never seen where that's gone. And if it's gone, where is it? And I'd like to see it apportioned out to what, and I dare say the people of the Isle of Wight would like to see where 17.5 million of ASDA funding went. Because that first budget, when Councillor, Councillor Stewart assumed the leadership, was listed on one page of A4 on various items. And one of those items was uh, the new windows at County Hall, a million pound. And now we're looking at, okay, County Hall needs on the fifth floor air conditioning at 300 or 400,000 pounds. That is not affecting the people of this island in any way, shape or form in a positive manner. What I would suggest with your budget with the, with the Conservative administration budget is that they look at what they can do with that funding and indeed other, other funding that's been salted away and start to look at what they can do within their communities with regard to fly tipping, litter, dog fouling, environmental enforcement. Thank you, Councillor. Your time is up. Thank you. 
You want to finish your sentence? I think I've made my point. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Councillor Barry, you're right on cue as well. Can you hear me all right? We can hear you. Right. Thank you. Uh, talking initially about speed cameras. It's nice to think that if you vote for something in somebody's uh, motion to the full council, you will then be stuck with that and have a duty to fulfil it. When I voted for it, and I respect I did, I wasn't told that it was going to pay, cost £300,000 and we'd have to close the libraries and all the other things to pay for it. And speed cameras is not a new thing on the Isle of Wight. There used to be fixed speed cameras, which the police pay for in their budget. They were done away with. Then the Lib Dems bought two portable cameras, like you're talking about now, they cost £12,000 each. Not £300,000, £12,000 each. And the first, one of the first people to caught, be caught on them was the Chair of Roads and Transport, and that's why it sticks in my mind. I, bet, I think that we've got a duty to spend the money at budget time as we think best. And at the moment, and I think that most of the Isle of Wight would agree with me, there's other things, better things to spend that money on than speed cameras. I'd just quickly like to move on to Councillor Abraham's talk about a 14% budget. And he's been on Medina Borough and he's done this and he's done that. Well, 14% wasn't the highest budget put forward on the Isle of Wight, bearing in mind that of that 14%, that was when care in the community came in and we put 9.7% of that 14 into social services, adult social services. The highest one ever was by the Tory, Liberal Democrat, uh, the Tory clique on the Dean of Borough Council, who, who didn't have social services to worry about, came in with a budget of 23%. So let's get away from the past. Let's get away from what the independents done or anybody else done. Let's concentrate on today and what we're going to deliver and the best we can deliver for the people we're serving. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. If you turn your camera and microphone off, Thank you. then I'll go on to Councillor Perks. Councillor Perks, you've got three minutes, please. If you turn your camera and microphone on. Thanks very much. Um, I'll, I'll be brief. I did have a word with Dave Stewart this afternoon uh, regarding the mobile library, um, overnight parking charges, uh, and various other things, including Remembrance Day parades, etc., and the amount of charges that are incurred uh, by the different carnivals and everybody else uh, because of the charges. Uh, levied on them by Island Rose with, you know, under the auspices of the Isle of Wight Council. Um, having said that, which is something I think they could reduce drastically, um, they do a good job. So the um, Isle of Wight Council and the Conservatives have got that uh, contract for Island Roads under control. If you look around Ventnor, we've had some real good improvements and we've got some more good improvements coming with Trinity Road and Alpine Road, which are long overdue, but they are getting done. Um, this afternoon, also I had, a, I had a chat with David, and uh, and I thought, well, yeah, that's it. I can go with the Conservatives on this one because I think they pretty well. Nobody likes you know uh, the the increases, but we've all got to bite the bullet. There's loads and loads and loads of things to do, and prices have to go up. Um, but there's also lots of things that are wrong. Um, I heart back for 30 odd years living on the island now, um, and I've always supported the police, um, and in my profession as a, as a licensee of 40 odd years. Um, I worked with the police on many, many occasions. Um, but nowadays, I have to look back and say, are we in a better position now in conjunction with Hampshire County, um, Hampshire Constabulary, or was it better when it was the Isle of Wight Constabulary? And I have to say, um, having had my front door kicked in last week um, and got no satisfaction whatsoever, I have a thousand pound excess on my um, glass on the pub. So it will be out of your holiday fund, comes six or seven hundred pound. Um, and no policeman on duty, 
uh, no ongoing investigation because there was no CCTV sufficient enough to um, to actually point to who it was, although we've got a name in the frame. Um, so I'm a bit betwixt between and thinking, well, I can still go with the Conserves because the three amendments, as much as I like Jeff, although we did have a little fallout some while ago, um, I agree with a lot of the Labour things with um, with unions and things. We have to have a, a union because as long as they're working on a level playing field, business and unions work together. Um, but the other things so I look at the Conservatives and I think, why the hell can't they just get that floating bridge sorted out? Why is it taking so long? This is eight years coming up now and I am still pulling my hair out trying to get ha the Haven inventor sorted out and there's a, an easy way of doing it which would cost about 300,000 um, and which would put paid to a lot of the dredging that has to be carried out um, and you would recoup that over the next three years. It could be done. So if they're that 40 million that they've got for coastal um, coastal works coming up, I hope they earmark some of that for Ventnor because Ventnor needs that extra stuff doing down on the seafront there. Um, and one last point was um, I've always gone all right with Wayne Whittle um, and out of all of them tonight, he's the one that has come up with the logical, good common sense way of looking after the island and that is look after the small businesses, let them prosper and increase productivity, increase employment and the island will be a better place for it and stop White Link, letting everybody come on to the Isle of Wight and saying you're welcome tourists, you're not. If you live in somewhere like Halifax where you're tier five, stay there, don't come here. That's Thanks great. Very Thank much. you very much, Councillor Burks. That's good. Uh, next we have Councillor Price. Thank you. Hello, Councillor Price. Thank you, Chairman. Councillor Burks, um, if you turn your camera off, please. Thank you. There we go. Thank you, Chairman. Um, Ending this term as a councillor, I think we will have a responsibility to make sure that there is a sound um, and secure financial position that the council is left in for the next administration, whether it happens to be the one I'm in or uh, uh, one of a different style, let's say. Um, but we do have a responsibility to do that. Um, on the Conservative Group's budget, which obviously I'm part of, I've had some input into it, um, there's a lot of things I agree with and of course there'll be things I disagree with. Um, one thing in particular is the increase in um, overnight parking which is going to hit Newport again very hard when it comes to parking fees. Um, but I, I'm pleased to say that I'm making inroads um, with Council Award on um, some other um, initiatives for Newport outside of the budget process. Um, I welcome the comp compulsory purchase order funding um, but voting for any council tax rise is very difficult. Um, it's not something that I ever like doing. It hurts the pockets of every adult individual on the island, um, and it's hard to um, it's hard to do that. Um, what I've known, what I have done this evening is I've listened to the debates and I've studied with interest all of the um, proposals, and I will actually be supporting Councillor Brodie's budget this evening, um, and I'll be supporting that because he's actually come up with something that I consider to be well researched. Councillor Brodie has worked on this on his own and has actually, um, as usual, come up with some sound arguments. I don't agree with everything he says, um, but I certainly do agree with the ethos and the potential to only raise council tax by the 1.99%. So at this point, I would be supporting Councillor Brodie's budget. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Price. Councillor Love, you are next to speak and you've got three minutes. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. And uh, I sit here and I've listened with uh, great interest to uh, the debates tonight. And I want to say thank you to Councillor Price because um, I was starting to be quite disheartened because here we have again, I just sit here and wonder what the general public will make of our council and the way that we do business. Um, given the number of hand grenades which are thrown in from one side or another about different policies. What we've demonstrated tonight is that we are not a council. We are a council of parties who do different things and want to do uh, and don't want to work together. A true council would sit round a table, would work out exactly what it wants to do and then bring a collective to the table that everybody can support because you know, let's face it, there's a lot of charades going on here tonight, isn't there? You know, we all know 
that ultimately the party with the most votes, which is obviously this administration is the Tory party, will vote through their their agenda tonight. You know, there's, there's very little doubt in that. That a real administration would sit down and collectively agree what they're going to do before we before we reach this point, and then and then provide information in a positive way to inform the public about what it is that we would like to do. I'm afraid. So I think that, that you know local governance is failing all round because we fail to work together and put the parties, whatever parties those are, before the people, and that is what is wrong. I mean. You know, there are some things here tonight. With obviously, they're coming up to get on to a local election, and the, you know, council hall starts off by saying how disappointed he is about talking about about um, party politics, politics, but then goes on to talk about party politics himself. And that's what I mean about hand grenades. We should be working together as a group. We should be talking long before it reaches that this point of voting to try and bring all of our uh, ideas and suggestions together rather than separate groups sitting in their own collective, where we then have to make a choice between A, B and C, when in fact, all of those things contain really quite interesting things. And, um, and that is a huge, huge failure. I do take issue with one of the budget points, which is about, you know, um, the proposed 400,000 to put bow thrusters on the floating bridge, which is just the discussion at this point, that that would significantly eat into anybody's budget and it's not even being mentioned. And so, you know, the floating bridge is a significant part because it affects the, the whole of the north of the island. And we need to address that in order to start making some real savings on that point. And I can see the chairperson's going to shut me up. So I'd like to say, you know, thank you to all of you for putting your ideas forward. But I'm so disappointed that we couldn't have actually come around at the table and done a collective budget. Thank you very much. That's good timing, Councillor Love. Um, if you could turn your camera off when you're ready. And um, then lastly, I'm going to bring in Councillor Mostel. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Good evening, everybody. Um, as always, I've listened to everybody. Um, I'd just like to remind some people who are saying that we should all sit around a table and discuss budgets. Well, we have. Um, this has budgets has been discussed at scrutiny and it has been discussed at inputs um, at cabinet. So everybody has had a level of input in into this. You know, the budget did go to scrutiny. Um, I'd like to say I've always supported Councillor Brodie's budget, um, but this year I can't. Um, but that's mainly because of raiding the transformation fund, um, because the transformation fund is doing some excellent work um, to help adult social care and children's services. Um, on average speed cameras, I'd like to thank everybody who supported my motion for council back in November. There was a reason that I brought that motion and it should be noted by every councillor now and every prospective candidate that there is no point when residents ask you to work with them on speeding to reduce speed limits or, you know, to sort out speeding. Um, because you will be giving a false promise if you say you're going to reduce the speed limit and the world's all going to be tickety boo because until actually you have some way of forcing it and encouraging drivers to you know drive safely along those country rural roads or for example my friends who live on the Avaland um, who I've seen videos of racing cars on a Friday and Saturday night um, the best they're likely to be promised in the independent budget is a dotto train which I'm sure if you're following a dotto train across you know through Yavaland it might slow the cars down a little bit but it's not going to solve the problem at night people have a right to live safely um, and some sort of enforcement to be done um, and note that 200 that 300,000 is not just for two that two cameras um, as an administration I am really proud that we're going to be opening the doors of a permanent homeless shelter and assessment hub in June um, what an achievement to to actually um, get there. I was hoping that the doors would be open be before the next election and um, really just so I could say you know we achieved this on my watch and um, the housing first project is really a success and ensuring that we help provide um, a place that everyone has access to say this is my home you know you can't get people to deal or address their mental health or their addiction issues if they don't have the home first you know the shelter that they can be on you know so I think this is a real huge step forward and it should be acknowledged 
Um, and lastly, Councillor Stevens, nothing irritates me more than people saying about investment in County Hall. We have social workers that work in that building. We have democratic services. You know, we have legal service that work in that building when everybody goes back to work after COVID. And there is nothing worse than walking through in the middle of winter and you see people sat there in, you know, capes and mittens. You know, everybody has a right to a decent working environment. And we have a duty of care as a council to ensure that the staff that work within that building have a decent working you know space it's freezing in that building in some parts of the winter there's wind blowing personally i've not county hall down and start again but clearly we don't have the budget to do that so i will be supporting the conservative budget and thank you for listening thank you councillor again good timing uh, councillor churchman you indicated you wish to speak and you've got three minutes thank you you turn your microphone on Thank you, Chair. I don't seem to have a chat button, and which is why I waved at you. Um, as a council and an administration, we've managed to come up with a lawful, legal, balanced budget. And I don't know whether other people, not only in the council, but outside, realise there are many councillors across the UK that are not going to be able to achieve that. So I take my hat off to our cabinet and to all the officers. I would also point out to Carl Love that at one time budgets were never disclosed until almost the night of full council. And George, I can see, sorry, Councillor Chairman, um, agreeing with me, uh, budgets were kept very, very secret right until the night of the meeting. So we have progressed quite a lot by um, publishing everything so people can have a good look at it and make at least make informed comments about it. However, I would like to go back to say um, uh, such a big thank you to all the people who've worked on it uh, because they worked extremely hard in the most appalling conditions and incidentally, Councillor Mosdell, to put people into a badly ventilated, freezing cold building would actually go against the employment legislation. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Churchman. That brings us to the end of the speakers tonight and the end of the debate. I think we've debated it fully. What we're going to do now, I'm going to ask each group leader to sum up and reply to any points made during the debate. And I will take this in reverse order, uh, which I will start with Councillor Jones Evans. I know you didn't do a proposal, but would you like to sum up on any points made during, during the debates or anything? No connection. Thank you. Councillor Andre, can I ask you to sum up and respond to any points made? You've got five minutes for that. Councillor Andre. Councillor Andre, would you like Sorry, to respond? Um, I'm having trouble. Oh, there we go. I okay. was having it's trouble. Quite bad tonight, as well. I think uh, there's a few gremlins in the system. Maybe <laughs> Councillor Peace would like to. Uh, Everyone has got a problem tonight. Yeah. For us. Um, yes, there, there are a few points that I would like to respond to. Um, to Councillor Mosdell. I don't think any of us would, would deny that, yes, community safety is very important, but our priorities have changed. And um, I quite like her idea, actually, of um, perhaps if we had a dotto train, it would, um, would solve a lot of our problems. So, yeah, that's not a bad idea. Um, she also mentioned about um, County Hall and the, the sort of standards of County Hall. Uh, with staff going back, but and I'm sure again, Councillor Peace um, very eloquently said about the amount of money that's been invested in agile working. And I think we have to be very careful not to make that assumption that we are just going to revert back to our previous way of working. So I would I would challenge that. To Councillor Hollis, um, he referred to the um, Island Independent Group's commissioning of the floating bridge, but surely it's been the Conservative administration's responsibility for the ongoing management. 
and it's quite clear, it was quite clear from early on in their administration that we had been sold a dead duck and it should have been scrapped and recommissioned long ago and I really don't know why we're still pouring money into that. To council award, I think in trying to give clarity over um, our, uh, my um, alluding to the amount that we actually proposed in last year's budget for compulsory purchase orders. He's, he's misinterpreted that. What I said was in relation to our budget proposals last year, the, the sum that we allocated, just to be clear. Again, to Councillor Abraham, um, the bounce back loans that we have proposed to yes, they they are. We, we, we fully appreciate that the um, empty properties are in the main largely owned by um, private individuals, but it's it's a well evident fact that sorry. It's a well evident fact that um, that a lot of empty homes are empty because the owners cannot afford to to um, to renovate them. So this would enable them to be renovated, but actually with, just excuse me one moment, but, but um, enabling them to renovate them, but with the charge that they would have to be brought in for social housing. I think my dog wants to get in on that, so I do apologise. Okay. Um, I will in a second. Um, I'd like to thank Councillor Whittle for his acknowledgement um, that it was the independent administration that did indeed set up the regeneration directorate as prior to that we had no regeneration team. Um, Councillor Stevens actually does make a good point in that um, speed cameras, the actual money um, received from the fines goes to the uh, police and therefore I do agree with him that police and crime commissioner should fund um, speed cameras. And finally, to counsel the piece, I would assure him that when a new independent administration takes over after the May elections, we will be making the best decisions that put our island residents first, not political party politics. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, if you could turn your camera off as well, save and take that. Hello, Councillor Brody. Yes, I've got you next, uh, and you've got five minutes to sum up and note any points. Right, thank you, Chair, and I've just about recovered from Councillor Price's support, which was uh, not massively unsurprising, I have to say. Councillor Price and I work well together. Just a few things I'd like to respond to. I think there's a fundamental understanding about my proposal. For once, I'm not proposing to use reserves at all. It's in fact the administration that's using reserves. I've listened to them, Councillor Hollis. You can't use reserves. So I listened to them. And what do they do this year? They eat into reserves. What I do is I defer expenditure. I defer the 2.4 million that you lose by a 3%, not having the 3% increase that the Tories want to do, because I want to see the books. Because when you're in opposition, you get one week with access to finance officers. You don't get access to the other 51 weeks. Council Whittle constantly referred to my officers. That's the way it feels on this council. As an opposition member, you don't feel that you have access. So no, I haven't gone for reserves this year and it's a failure to understand what I'm trying to do. Councillor Hollis is always my favourite favorite responder. You know, it's, uh, I mean, I look forward to, to these and as ever, he's as, he's as political as I'm political, though he is a member of a political party, and of course I'm not. And yes, I am a vitriolic member of this council because I get angry, because I represent the most deprived ward on the island, and I see how they suffer. And I think I have a right to be vitriolic on their behalf. He applauds me at, at Newport and Car Carisbrook Community Council for the way I run the finances and where he approves all of our budgets, they're approved unanimously, and then accuses us of having money sloshing around. I've never heard such rubbish in all of my life. And uh, members of his party are also on that, know that, including Councillor Price. Moving on, 
this Council of Peace refers to the 7% increase in the crematorium fees being not a lot. I'm going to put that on my election leaflets. It's typical of the lack of connection to ordinary people that members of the Conservative Party have. I could respond to a lot of other people here, but I'm not going to because the reality, I know how this goes today. We go through this grand performance. Back in 2006, I did my very first budget amendment when Andy Sutton ran the council. Some of you will remember that. I think you remember that, Chair. Um, I got two votes that night, myself and a Labour colleague. Um, I think I might get more than that tonight, but I know I'm not going to win. But at least one member of this council understands the struggle that people are going to face. If you vote for anything that has 5%, you're letting down the people of the island. Please support my amendment and reject everything else. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Brody. Can I bring in Councillor Garrett, please? Thank you. Councillor Garrett, would you like to sum up and respond to any points made? Thank you, Chair. I, yes, I would. Um, it, it's it's certainly been a, a very interesting debate, and, and I applaud the, applaud the fact that uh, a good number of Conservative uh, members of the Council have spoken and sought to explain their their proposals, and, and that's very important in democratic debate, whether or not you believe there should be party politics or not. Parties, of course, are coalitions of people who have a, a, a consistent philosophy and I see nothing nothing wrong with that in local government. Um, at, at the head of the debate, Councillor Medland spoke of lack of information and towards the foot of the debate, Councillor Love spoke about getting around the table. And that, that's absolutely right. We, we don't have a system in this council of um, seeking to find a consensus. And, and, and of course, that is uh, partly the, the way in which local government functions, but also partly the way in which the, this current Conservative administration has sought to shut down debate whenever it could. Um, any comparison of the current um, constitution with the previous one will show that that, that openness and transparency have diminished uh, considerably um, over the last four years. Uh, perhaps it's been the spirit of the diminu diminution of openness and transparency that Councillor Ward managed to bring clarity to the to the um, discussion around average speed cameras by turning a mist into a fog. Um, the papers clearly speak of two sets and yet he was trying to say it wasn't two and and this and that. So um, it does feel to me that that has not yet been um, properly thought through. I'm pleased that other members have recognised the role that the Police and Crime Commissioner, to whom we also pay um, a significant proportion of our council tax, should have a role in this. And that is why Lib Dem Amendment um, doesn't pull that money um, specifically and says no to cameras at all. It says that we can broaden the allocation of that money elsewhere. Uh, other members have spoken um, about various bits and pieces and, and um, I was uh, interested that Councillor Hastings justifies cuts by targeted to uh, what residents residents want. I think he was trying to, to say that somehow um, that by forcing residents to have a lower service, that would be what residents actually wanted. Um, and that that fits in with a rather rather bossy kind of way in which the whole Conservative uh, administration has conducted itself over the last four years. It's it, it's always been very much we were elected to decide and never we were elected to listen and represent. Um, Councillor Barry, my colleague, um, has spoken quite rightly. In the end, this is about concentrating on the day today. So it always disappoints me when people are feet searching further and back into their municipal memories to fight battles that are long past. Um, the issues today are far too acute and in some cases chronic to to play that game anymore. I think the Liberal Democrat amendment provides for something that um, conservative members who are, are not prepared to support um, anything else could could get behind. It makes sensible suggestions um, and I do commend it to them. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Garrett. Can I lastly ask the leader to sum up and reply to any points made during the debate? If you could come in, leader, you've got five minutes. Yes, thank you, Chairman, um, and thank you every member who's contributed to the debate this evening. 
Um, I'll focus on some key points that I've picked up. I'll summarise the Liberal Dems and um, some of our island independences tinkering around the edges. Um, I will say about Councillor Brody, uh, I respect his radical approach. He is bold in his approach. I just don't agree with him. Um, I do agree with Councillor Lilly that we need to support jobs. Why? Because in just six weeks time, when we have an election, the people of the Isle of Wight would need to think about the fact they will still be in a pandemic. The misapprehension it's gone away and it hasn't. Um, we must approve a law form balanced budget because that's our duty. And I expect our group will support our budget and I'll be happy in due course to be judged on our merits. Um, Councillor Perks, for me, um, with what not too many councillors do we acknowledge some of the positive stuff that's going on elsewhere, island roads in particular. The floating bridge, which uh, we do have proposals that will come forward, but as all the members know, we are in a legal process. I'm disappointed in Councillor Love, but and he knows that as well, because at one point we shared a boat together where he told me he wasn't going to be political over the floating bridge. And he was going to look forward and then promptly he went back on his words. So unfortunately, I can't do much about that. Um, I'm just going to read you one bit for how long have I got, Chair? I just think I've got a few minutes, but um just going to read the island it's deal. Letter. Minutes left. Okay. Thank you. I've given every member of this council a copy of the letter I have received from the minister about the island deal. And it's a long letter and they know they can see it. But I want to read one point out. The officials from the cities and local growth unit will liaise with your economic development team to discuss the next steps and our expectations on what the evidence base should cover to ensure best value to us and the island. We expect it to go further than the study by Portsmouth University and we will discuss this in detail. Now, I know that I've had a lot of correspondence and a lot of communication with government, but this is a government telling us we want to work with you to tidy up this bid so that we can see your true case. And what's more, we're going to give you £50,000 to do it. Now, I'm ha this can go in the public domain, happy to go to the press. This is a government that are working with us on this island deal. And I think every member should remember that. Finally, um, can I just say that we have a couple of points from Councillor Andre. He doesn't deny the importance of community safety, that's good. Um, floating bridge, we were sold a dead duck and now we've been sold it. Well, actually, we weren't sold a dead duck. Um, as Councillor Stevens uh, pointed out, he, he and that independent administration had the arrival. Yes, we accept the responsibility thereafter. And I want to be honest and fair with Councillor Stevens. He didn't resign. That was Councillor Bacon and the deputy who walked out on the island at that time. Um, so I will acknowledge what he said. And finally, I probably would agree with Councillor Garrett. It's been a good debate. There's been lots of political posturing, as you would expect six weeks before an election. And I think it's time now that we all go to the vote and um, do what we should do for the island community. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Stewart. On that note, I will call for a 10 minute break. Uh, we've got officers here also who need Give our eyes a rest for 10 minutes. So I will, it's now at 7.33 now. I'll see you in 10 minutes. Thank you very much.
Thank you, councillors. I think we are ready to start again. Hope you enjoy your break. Uh, there's been a point of order called uh, Councillor Hastings. Has got a point of order to raise. Councillor Hastings, would you come on, please? And uh, thank you. Just wait for that line. Thank, thank you, Chairman. Uh, yes, yeah, so in our in our break, it's just occurred to me. I'm sitting here thinking, after months of hard work alongside colleagues and officers, using analysis, statistics, and data to make proposals that work for the council and residents alike, I should not like to be called bossy. I would therefore like Councillor Garrett to withdraw that comment, please. Uh, that's, that's not a procedural point of order, Councillor. I've been informed. I'd still like him to withdraw it. Um, Councillor Garrett, would you like to respond? Thank you, Chair. The, the, the use of the word was an epithet for the administration's culture. If, if Councillor Hastings felt that in any way that I was impugning his character, then I would happily withdraw that. Thank you. That's Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Thank you, Councillor Garrett. Thank you. Now we can move on. Yeah, sorry, just before you do, um, I, I, whether we deal with it now or later, I'd like Councillor Garrett to have the opportunity to explain his attitude towards what he describes as the culture. Um, of this administration um, because there are a great deal of officers and members who do a lot of good work and uh, I certainly wouldn't preside over a bad culture um, but I'm happy to leave it till after the vote. Leave it till after the vote, yep. Thank you Councillor Stewart. So I'll make a start. So I will invite the leader to move his recommendation and Thank after you, a second, Chairman. there will be no discussion on this. Thank you. Thank you. I move the recommendation as uh, shown in the papers, and it's quite significant. And I uh, have Councillor Hutchinson, I think, who has already seconded it. Yeah. Councillor Hutchinson, yeah. you agree? Uh, I, I confirm that, Chairman. I second it. Thank you very much for that. Then we'll move on to Councillor Garrett. And would you like to propose your amendment, again, without discussion? And uh, name your seconder, please. I, I, I move my amendment and Councillor Barry will be seconding. Thank you. Uh, I think that Councillor Barry did confirm. Can we just confirm again? I can, yeah, I second it. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will take that one to the vote now. So this just, will be just for clarification, we're voting on the amendment. Is that correct? We're voting on Councillor Garrett's amendment. Thank you. Thank you. I'll call your name and you will go for or against. Councillor Abraham. Thank you. Against. Councillor Axford's absent. Councillor Bertie. Against. Councillor Beston. Against. Councillor Brading. Against. Councillor Chapman. Against. Councillor Churchman. Oh, sorry, against. I've spoken twice. Sorry. <coughs> Councillor Chapman, are you with us? I think he's he's, he's lost connection, unfortunately. <laughs> Councillor Chapman is not. <laughs> Councillor Hastings. Against. Councillor Henry. Against. Councillor Hobart. Councillor Hobart. Against. Councillor Hollis. Against. Councillor Hutchinson. Against. Councillor Kilpatrick. Against. Councillor Mosdell. Against. Councillor Nicholson. Against. Councillor Adlaw. Against. Councillor Peace. Against. Councillor Price. Sorry, connection troubles, Chairman. Against. Councillor Quirk. Against. Councillor Tyndall. Councillor Tyndall. We've come back to you. Councillor Ward. Against. Councillor Whittle. Against. Councillor Andre. Councillor Downer. 
Four. Councillor Fuller. Four. Councillor Howe. Four. Councillor Lilly. Four. Councillor Medland. Four. Councillor P.C. Wilcox. I'm hoping this is working, is it? I, I hope so. Four. Are you, OK, thank you very much. Councillor Jones Evans. Abstain. Um, Councillor Love. Abstain. Is your microphone off? Councillor Brody. <laughs> Sorry, what was the last one? I didn't hear Councillor Love. Councillor Brody. Can I know what Councillor Love's vote was, please? Yeah, Councillor Love abstained. Right, thank you. I'm against. I don't vote for five percent. Jim, Councillor Stevens. Thanks. Councillor Barry. Councillor Barry. Four. Four. Thank you. Four. Councillor Merwell. Against. Councillor Perks. Against. Uh, Councillor Garrett. Sorry. Four. Councillor Perks. Four. It's against. Councillor Perks. Done him. He's done against. I'm I'm against. I just voted. Thank you. Councillor Smart. Four. Councillor Stewart. Against. We need to come back to Councillor Tyndall. Against. Yes, thank you very much. And we have everybody on there. Let's get the results for this. I won't expect him to be in here to listen to this problem. Councillor Barry, your microphone is still on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've got the results. It is 10-4, 26 against, and two abstentions. So that amendment falls. With that, we will move on to Councillor Brodie's amendment. Would you like to propose? Your amendment, Councillor Brodie, without discussion, and ask for a seconder, please. Yes, Chair, I formally propose my amendment, and Councillor Stevens has agreed to second. Councillor agrees. So it's, we, we had notification of that. Thank you. We will take that one to the vote now. And if you are ready on the buttons with your microphones. Same again, Councillor Abraham. This is Count Councillor Brodie's amendment. Yeah, against. Against. Councillor Bertie. Against. Councillor Beston. Against. Councillor Brading. Against. Councillor Chapman. Councillor Churchman. Against. Councillor Hastings. Against. Councillor Henry. Against. Councillor Hobart. Against. Councillor Hollis. Against. Councillor Hutchison. Against. Councillor Kilpatrick. Abstain. Councillor Mostel. Against. Councillor Nicholson. Against. Councillor Outlaw. Against. Councillor Peace. Against. Councillor Price. Four. Councillor Quirk. Against. Councillor Tyndall. Against. Councillor Ward. Against. Councillor Whittle. Against. Councillor Andre. Four. Councillor Downer. Four. Councillor Fuller. Against. Councillor Howe. <laughs> Councillor Howe. We come back to you. Councillor Lilly. Four. Councillor Medland. Four. Councillor PC Wilcox. If it's working, four. Great, thank you. 
Councillor Jones Evans. Four. Thank you. Councillor Lum. Four. Councillor Brody. Four. Councillor Stevens. Four. Councillor Barry. Four. Councillor Garrett. Four. Councillor Murwell. Four. Thank you. Councillor Perks. Four. I'm against. Councillor Smart. Four. And Councillor Stewart. Against. Thank you very much. Councillor Howe. Are you there, Councillor? Councillor Howe is four. Thank you. Thank you, councillors. The result of that one is 16 for, 21 against, and one abstention. So that amendment fall as well. Thank you. We will move on to the next one, which is Councillor Andre. Could I invite you to propose your amendment without discussion and nominate your seconder, please? Thank you, Chairman. I would like to propose the budget amendment on behalf of the Island Independent Group and uh, Council Fuller will be my seconder. Thank you. Thank you. Please confirm, Councillor Fuller. Would you confirm that you are second? Yes, I can confirm that, Chairman. Thank you very much. So we've got that formally. We will take that one to the vote as well. On Councillor Andre's mm. amendment. And it will be the same if you could be ready with your mute button. And uh, Councillor Abraham, your vote, please. Against. Councillor Bertie. Against. Councillor Beston. Against. Councillor Brading. Against. Councillor Chapman, still away. Councillor Churchman. Against. Councillor Hastings. Sorry, Chairman, uh, microphone against. Thank you. Councillor Henry. Against. Councillor Hobart. Against. Councillor Hollis. Against. Councillor Hutchinson. Against. Councillor Kilpatrick. Against. Councillor Mosdell. Against. Councillor Nicholson. Against. Councillor Outlaw. Against. Councillor Peace. Against. Councillor Price. Against. Councillor Quirk. Against. Councillor Tyndall. Against. Councillor Ward. Against. Councillor Whittle. Against. Councillor Andre. Four. Councillor Downer. Four. Thank you. Councillor Fuller. Four. Councillor Howe. Four. Councillor Lilly. Four. Councillor Medland. Four. Councillor PC Wilcox. Four. Councillor Jones Evans. Mm. Abstain. Thank you. Councillor Love. Four. Councillor Brody. Against. Councillor Stevens. Mm. Councillor Bar Barry. Sorry, what was that, Chair? We've got to hear these boards. Councillor Stevens against. Councillor Barry. Four. Councillor Garrett. Four. Councillor Murwell. Against. Councillor Perks. Against. I'm against. Councillor Smart. Four. And Councillor Stewart. Against. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, councillors. We just wait for the results to come back.
Councillors Andre, um, Councillor Andre's amendment, the result is four. There's 11 votes for, 26 against, and one abstention. So that amendment falls as well. Yeah, 11 for, 26 against, and one abstention. Thank you. Now we're going to vote. We're going to vote now on the substantive, substantive motion. motion. Mm -hmm. As moved by the leader. Uh, that's been moved and proposed and seconded. And all amendments were agreed. So we will take that straight to the vote. No amendment. It is as proposed. Sorry. Apologies. No amendment. It is as proposed. We will start with Councillor Abraham on the leader's motion. Four. Councillor Bertie. Four. Councillor Beston. Four. Councillor Brading. Four. Councillor Chapman. Still not with us. Councillor Churchman. Four. Councillor Hastings. Four. Councillor Henry. Four. Councillor Hobart. Four. Councillor Hollis. Four. Councillor Hutchison. Four. Councillor Kilpatrick. Four. Councillor Mosdell. Four. Councillor Nicholson. Four. Councillor Outlaw. Four. Councillor Peace. Four. Councillor Price. Four. Councillor Quirk. Four. Councillor Tyndall. Four. Councillor Ward. Four. Councillor Whittle. Four. Councillor Andre. Against. Councillor Downer. Against. Councillor Fuller. Against. Councillor Howe. Against. Councillor Lilly. Against. Councillor Medland. Against. Councillor P.C. Wilcox. Uh, that's, that's Councillor P.C. Wilcox. Against. Okay. Councillor Jones Evans. Against. Councillor Love. Against. Councillor Brody. Against. Councillor Stevens. Against. Councillor Barry. Against. Councillor Garrett. Against. Councillor Muro. <laughs> Councillor Muro. We'll come back. Four. Thank you. Councillor Perks. Four. Uh, I vote four. Councillor Smart. Against. And Councillor Stewart. Four. Thank you. That's all the votes in. The results for the original motion as, passed, as proposed by the leader is 24 votes for, 14 against, and there's no abstentions. That is a named vote, councillors. So that motion is carried. Thank you very much. We will carry on to the next item, which is number seven on your agenda, which is the independent remuneration panel Established and appointed of members and the scheme of members allowances 21-22 and his review. That's agenda item 7A of the public document back. And I ask the leader to move this paper, please. Thank you. And you need a seconder. Thank you. Just wait for the... And you've got three minutes on that. Thank you. Yep. So, uh, Chairman, just waiting for the microphone to the camera to move. Thank you. We can hear you. You can start. Yeah, you can make a start. Go now. Uh, uh, I'm live now. Thank you, Chairman. Um, okay. So the um, 
proposal is as per the um, papers which have been circulated. Um, just a brief report from me. This report refreshes the independent of independent remuneration panel through the proposed new appointments. All four recommended candidates greatly impressed and each have a wealth of experience to contribute to the efficient and effective working of the new panel. The report also rightly thanks outgoing members for their hard work over several years on behalf of the local community. Looking ahead to beyond the May elections, the report by the establishment of this new panel enables timely recommendations to be made on any proposed changes in constitutional or other arrangements. Finally, the report rightly addresses concerns raised recently and makes abundantly clear that the Isle of Wight Members Allowance Scheme, which was approved in 2018, is the current scheme and is the one which applies from the start of the new scheme year on the 1st of April. I commend the recommendations set out in the report, but with one amendment, namely to the wording at paragraph 58, I move the officer's recommendation subject to replacement with the following words, that the council notes and reaffirms that the Isle of Wight Council Members Allowance Scheme already approved on the 19th of September 2018 applies for the scheme year 2021-2022 as set out in Appendix 1 to this report. Um, it may be, I look for a seconder first of all. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to screen here, Laura, Councillor PC Wilcox. Is, I don't think she's seconding it, I don't know. She's seconding the proposal for a vote, I think. Oh, I'm seconding right. the proposal for a vote, please. A vote. Yes, Thank so you. I'll first look for a seconder for the uh, report. Uh, I'll, I'll second the report, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Hastings. Thank and you, also, Councillor Hastings. Um, we have the monitoring officer with us who has prepared and his name is on the documentation. I just would like to check with him that I've covered everything we need, legally need to do so. And if there's any other explanation he wants to give. Thank you, Mr Potter. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Chairman, and thank you, Leader. Uh, now, I think uh, you, you've covered uh, the uh, basis of the report. Uh, if there are any questions, obviously I'm uh, on standby to answer any questions. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Potter. Are there any questions? <coughs> Councillor PC Wilcox? Yeah, I thought Councillor Brody was going to come in. Uh, sorry. Um, yeah, well, the, the, the one thing that I would like to say, I mean, all right, uh, can I let Jeff come in first, please, and then I can come in. Thank you. Councillor Brody, would you like to come in first? Thank you, Chair. Sorry, I wasn't quick enough on the draw there. Um, OK. Independent remuneration panel. Recommendations, allowances, new panel, old panel. What a mess this council has got itself into as a result of the activities of the acting monitoring officer uh, who predeceased Mr. Potter. He doesn't work for the council anymore, so I can refer to him. And I would remind every member of this council that I was the only member of this council who didn't vote for the extension of that gentleman's contract last February. And I learned over a period of time that his advice was always, well, frankly, unacceptable. We got into a right mess over his report on members' allowances last September. We were told that we had to approve an increase in members' allowances in the report by the said gentleman. We then voted on it on that advice from that officer, and it caused a great deal of dissatisfaction amongst islanders. Voting on allowance is always very difficult. We have no choice. We have to accept recommendations or not. We do have to but there is an independent panel. But we were told we had to vote on something that had subsequently transpired. We didn't have to at all, according to Mr. Potter. We were told, that in fact, in 2018, the then independent remuneration panel had recommended that we should have allowances that were increased by uh, index linking every year for the duration of this council. We were told that was the case and that we didn't no, do, need to do anything other than note. And 
we ended up having a vote last September that was entirely unnecessary. We then were told that that independent remuneration panel had advised that they felt that they should that they should be consulted about subsequent rolling forward or index linking. That was what they said, and this is also what they told the local media. To respected members of our community were very clear that they were never consulted about what we voted on last September, that they recognised almost certainly the changed circumstances in which we live due to the COVID pandemic. We have then got into a situation where those members understandably have declined to continue as members of the independent remuneration panel. And we have then set up a new panel consisting of the members of the appointments panel to appoint members to this panel. So not only do we have the difficulty of having to vote on whether to accept recommendations, we're now in the business of appointing people to these, these panels. Now, I, in my time on this council, I have never been aware that there's been member involvement. Mr Potter says in his report that has been the case. It certainly hasn't been as formal as an appointments panel in my experience. And I was chair of the employment committee that did all appointments for, for three years. So people need to remember that. Thank you. So an appointment panel was appointed. Are you going to let me continue or cut me off, Chair? Finish up, finish up, paragraph. All right, OK, I'll shut up because obviously I'm I'm not a Conservative. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. There's been a point That's of order. That's just typical order. of this Council. What? Yes, you've shown for the order. last two years. Just offered to let you yes, continue. Yes, Chairman, Chairman, as a point of order, as a point of order, uh, what Councillor um, Brody is saying is is uh, you is I think one libelous, and secondly, uh, the person concerned has no right of reply, and that does not sit comfortably in any civilized debate. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And I uh, suggest yeah. that Councillor Lumley retracts his remarks or leaves the meeting. Councillor Brodie, would you like to retract your comments? Councillor Brodie, you're not going to retract? OK, I'll carry on. Councillor PC Wilcox is next to speak. Thank you. OK, um, I've got correspondence dating back from staff to the 2019. Um, so they were corresponding with the um, IRP. On the 22nd of September, I made senior staff aware of the concerns from the independent remuneration panel following the September vote. Quote, members this year would be in luck. So this is this is actually what the remuneration panel um, a quote from them that they would be in line with staff at the council, it, but it was a guiding principle, not a binding statement in their understanding. It's pertinent to say, Mr Potter says, that he was concerned that both felt that they were treated with contempt and he further apologised for a communication breakdown, for which I'm grateful that Mr Potter has, has acknowledged that. I cannot speak highly enough of Max and Mike their understanding of what they agreed back in 2018. I mean, Max was thought so highly in top government that he was sent here as a number one governor to deal with the issues following the three escaped prisoners. That's how highly thought he was thought of. He could not have got his interpretation that wrong. Mike is the same. The Isle of Wight Council was very, very lucky to have two dedicated, extraordinarily intellectual men offer their services. Their treatment by this council is shambolic, totally disrespectful and quite frankly, insulting. I endorse their comments to senior staff. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Beasley Wilcox. 
Councillor Barry, you're next to speak, please. If you turn on your microphone and your camera, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Uh, I'm like some of the others here tonight can remember when we didn't have a remuneration panel and we were in the invidious situation where we had to award ourselves rises every year. The best thing that ever happened really was when the remuneration panels were set up and we all agreed that they were fair and square people who would come to a, a certain answer to, to the problem of members awarding themselves. Unfortunately, under the Tory administration, they recommended something like two and a half percent and the administration ignored that and awarded themselves a 35% rise. I benefited from the 35 rise, so I suppose I shouldn't grumble. But that caused the then the remuneration panel to resign on block. And that lesson doesn't seem to have been learnt. And now we've got other resignations coming and the result is we've got to employ or ask for people to come and serve on another remuneration panel. We need a remuneration panel and we've got to abide by what they say. It's not for this council. The next council will need yeah. it. This one won't because they've set up a sort of a president for life situation. So I'm all for this if it brings forth some fresh ideas, some fresh people and let's have a remuneration panel that is run properly and independently from this council. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Barry. I've been asked to, does any other member wish to speak before we, we get back to the leader to sum up? First, um, Councillor Stewart, would you like to uh, sum up? Thank you, Chair. I don't think there's too much for me to add because I think the net outcome of this is we will have a new independent remuneration panel, which as Bar Councillor Barry described, um, I don't know if there's anything the monitoring officer, our new current monitoring officer, wishes to add or clarify. And um, I just then want to clarify exactly what it is we're voting upon. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Mr. Potter. Uh, thank you, Chairman, and thank you, Leader. Uh, just one of the points to clarify, the um, um, recommendations came from an informal panel. Um, there wasn't an appointments committee panel itself, but members, a number of members were invited to take part as uh, on the selection process, as has happened in, in previous years. In relation to the point about the recommendations of the independent remuneration panel, uh, I think the central point comes out from the report that the scheme which was uh, approved in 2018 incorporated an indexation uh, provision which is operative for um, at least um, up to a period of four years. So it's a valid indexation provision. And again, as the report sets out, the government guidance makes perfectly clear that there is no obligation to seek the further views of any independent remuneration panel on an indexation provision which has been duly adopted in pursuance of recommendations given by a particular panel. Um, that is, is uh, basically uh, the position. Um, clearly sort of a, a number of views have been expressed and hopefully um, the content of the report has actually uh, addressed the concerns which have been raised. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Potter. Thank you, uh, Chair. So effectively, we are voting on the recommendation that's in the report and the outcome will be a newly formed independent remuneration panel. Is that correct? Thank you. Thank you, Leader. Uh, this comes as one paper. Yeah, and there is one recommendation. Um, yeah. I've been asked to separate it out, and I, I, I think it's it makes things very difficult. And I, I think we need to just do one vote on the whole paper as per recommendation. Uh, through you, Chair, just to, to clarify, um, basically, uh, as the leader outlined at the beginning of the uh, report, 
the, the report is as per um, uh, effectively adopting the officer recommendations subject to the change which was put on the screen. In terms of the technicalities, obviously um, these are officer recommendations with the amended recommendation. Uh, in terms of the technicalities, it is up to the leader to decide um, what motion he's putting forward. Um, and uh, I think he's, he's probably made the, that position clear subject to the amendment of the uh, recommendation put forward as an officer recommendation earlier. Thank you. So on that basis, Chair, I propose we move to the vote. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Stewart. I think we need to vote as on all rec on the recommendation as it, as, it, as it is in the paper. And if you, I will call for a vote, please. Thank you. Councillor Abraham. Four. Councillor Bertie. Four. Councillor Beston. Four. Councillor Brading. Four. Councillor Chapman. Offline. Councillor Churchman. Four. Councillor Hastings. Four. Councillor Henry. Four. Councillor Hobart. Four. Councillor Hollis. Four. Councillor Hutchinson. Four. Councillor Kilpatrick. Four. Councillor Mosdell. Four. Councillor Nicholson. Four. Councillor Adlaw. Four. Councillor Pease. Four. Councillor Price. Four. Councillor Quirk. Four. Councillor Tyndall. Four. Councillor Ward. Four. Councillor Whittle. Four. Councillor Andre. Against. Councillor Downer. Against. Councillor Fuller. Against. Councillor Howe. Four. 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 Councillor Lilly. Thank you. Against. Councillor Medland. Four. Councillor PC Wilcox. Against. Councillor Jones Evans. Against. Councillor Love. Against. Councillor Brody. Against. Councillor Stevens. Against. Councillor Barry. Four. Councillor Garrett. Four. Councillor Murwell. Against. Councillor Perks. Four. I vote four. <coughs> Councillor Smart. Against. Councillor Stewart. Four. Thank you. Thank you, councillors. We we'll just count the votes up. <coughs> okay, the result in that vote is 27 for 11 against and no abstentions. So that carries. Thank you very much. Councillors, now we are moving on to item eight on your agenda. And it is a motion submitted under part 4A of the procedure rule 9 of the Council's Constitution by Councillor Stewart. Thank you very much. You have five minutes, please. Go Thank on. you, Chair. Just before I start, um, I've been in uh, communication with Councillor Lilly on the body of the motion, um, and he suggested a slight amendment, which I am happy to uh, include in the body of the report for ease. And that would mean that after the words, of the Isle of Wight's local community, which is paragraph five, just at the bottom of the page. Um, it would also read, um, and our parish community and town councils. So we incorporate all of our, uh, uh, I would include parish in there. I can see somebody's typed it, but it's including parish town, and uh, uh, town, and, sorry, okay, community yes. town and parish council. So because Newport is now a community council and I want to protect that. And I know Councillor Lilly would probably happily second the, uh, the motion and also the amendment. Are you fine with that, Councillor Lilly? Uh, yes. Councillor Whittle is seconding yes. the motion, Chair. Councillor Whittle seconded. <coughs> Thank you. So I'm happy to embed that in there. We don't need to do a separate yeah. vote on the amendment. Can I speak to it? Yes. Yeah, it's it quite would. open, Chair, and then I'll pass to Councillor Whittle if you wish. Thank you. Okay. 
So members, I, I present, sorry. Um, go on, go for it, Tide. Councillor Stewart, yeah. Yeah, uh, members, I present this motion for consideration and I do so under the umbrella of a need to keep our community safe and against the backdrop of ensuring the island economic recovery. As the motion highlights, one of our now well-recognised strengths is we have a community that proved itself willing and able to step forward when asked. This motion therefore seeks to align our financial management with our regeneration activities, the strength and commitment of our community and the ongoing dialogue with government and the LEP, the Local Enterprise Partnership, to secure funding support for the island as part of the national recovery from the pandemic. There can be no doubt we have all felt the impact of COVID-19 on our lives. Many close colleagues, friends and family can stand testament to one of the worst public health pandemics the world has had to face. It has drained our community, drained our finances and drained our ambitions for the future. We've heard stories from many people who have for the last year found themselves in fear, fear of losing their jobs, fear of losing their families, fear of losing their lives. The impact here on the island has been enormous. However, with the arrival of the vaccine, it seems we are slowly finding a way out of the pandemic. And with government support, we have managed to help many island businesses to survive. With the last roadmap from the Prime Minister, we can now see a time frame for recovery. And the question is, what can we do now to improve our position, both financially, safely and economically to move forward? This motion seeks council endorsement to align our regeneration activities with the strength drawn from our local communities, to rebuild the island fortunes, support the approach being taken to social, economic and environmental recovery, and for us to work closely with government and the local enterprise partnership to secure levelling up funding and support from the UK Prosperity Fund as part of our approach to the national recovery from the pandemic. In particular, I seek the whole full council support on our engagement with government to evidence and validate our case for recognition as an island and the consequential expectation improvement in funding uh, allocated to us through the fair funding review or otherwise as respect as reflected in the corridor correspondence from government copy of which I have circulated to all members. It is written confirmation of the government's commitment to work with the island to prepare and improve our case building on the work of the Portsmouth University and our MP Bob Seeley. This was never going to be an easy achievement but I am satisfied government have recognised our unique position and is offering to work with us to secure a deal. Endorsement by full council together with recognition of the unique commitment of the island community to respond to COVID will enable a strong message to be sent to government. I therefore propose this motion and ask Councillor Whittle to second and speak. Thank you Councillor Stewart. Councillor Whittle. Thank you Leader for bringing forward this motion. We are at a critical point in the future of the Isle of Wight. A clear plan for making the best of what we have and working with communities and businesses to regenerate our island is, as a result of the pandemic, more important than ever. We have that plan. Inspiration Island, our regeneration strategy. What we need is the recognition that our projects to restore, recover and regenerate our communities need a financial leg up. The extra cost of helping us reach national and regional measures of prosperity and quality of life because we are an island and are well researched. The government's plans to secure a levelling up apply to the island as much as any northern or midlands county or district and the funds they will shortly announce need to find their way across the Solent. We need the council to speak with one voice. When we seek this support from government, our plans will transform the prospects for the people of the island, young and old, and will bring new jobs, homes, investment. And I would like to second this motion and would ask all members to support this motion. It's very important for the island. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Whittle. Uh, I think it's a good motion and I think with the addition of uh, the town and parish councils with their involvement and bring them into the fold and brings the community in as well so we speak as one voice from the island. Uh, person on the list I have to speak is Councillor Hollis. Councillor Hollis would you like to come in there please and after that I'll call Councillor Julie Smart. Uh, uh, yes Chairman, 
Um, I think that this is an unnecessary addition and change to it. Of course, it covers all, but this is a council motion. Uh, have we asked, just at a point, just as a point, have we actually asked all the, um, all the parishes, etc.? I'm sure they wouldn't uh, disagree, but I think that this is just an unnecessary addition. It's perfectly clear of what this motion means. And uh, I do, I just think that we ought to just have it as it stands and vote for that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Wallace. Councillor Smart, you'd like to come in? If you turn your microphone and camera on, please. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Chair, could I make a point of order, sorry, please? Sorry, I am going to get very, very emotional and I apologise. My late husband, Harry Rees, worked for, I can't Chair, remember how many Chair, years. I have a point of order and the monitoring officer is well aware that I have an amendment to this political posturing. And Could it's I... interesting that officers haven't brought it forward. I am terribly I, sorry, I, Jeff. I will shut up. Sorry, I, Shirley. I did not know. I submitted I did this not, afternoon. If can, sorry. This Shall I come back to you, Shirley? Where once again, I'm being treated appalling by you, this council. What is your point of order? Bring it in, please. The point Jeff, of order I'm is... I'm so I sorry. Jeff, love, I, I didn't know it was coming up. I am very emotional. You know that... This Harry council is an absolute disgrace. He's been for years and years and years on this. And I just yes, wanted to say, we, we've just got to continue. And I do apologise. Could be. <laughs> OK. Councillor Brody. Your point of order, please. Bring your point of order, please. Chair, can you hold your horses till it comes on live? Some of us haven't got fant Your bias against me and some opposition members is a disgrace not. tonight. There's an amendment on the screen. I submitted this this afternoon. It has not been tabled the way Councillor Lilly's was. This is motion is political posturing and I want to demonstrate that it is and it's just ignored. I expected it to be circulated in advance. They didn't bother. We'll take a couple of minutes to read the amendment, please. What is the point? I'm sorry, Shirley. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Is there somebody who could give Shirley some support? I just feel dreadful that I can hear her crying. Shirley, I really hope no, you're okay. No, I'm fine. Um, he, was, he was Shirley, lovely. Please. He Do you want to turn your camera off? He's hard for this island. Can, can we take five minutes? Can we, can we adjourn for five minutes while we read this? Keep us on the screen.
Thank you. Thank you, councillors. Councillor Brody, we've read your amendment. Would you like to speak on it and ask for a seconder, please? May I second it, please? Councillor Jones Evans. Councillor Jones Evans seconded. Councillor Brody, you'd like to speak on it? Thank you very much, Chair. And I'm sorry that Shirley's feeling distressed. I don't know what was going on there. The connections, as usual, are very poor, even though I'm now provided with council, a council laptop, which looks like it came out of the art. Um, it's becoming very difficult for this meeting. Now, I submitted this amendment this afternoon and I hoped that officers would have shared it with people beforehand. I have also emailed the leader of the council and asked him to withdraw this motion. He's ignored it as usual because he referred to political posturing earlier on and this motion is nothing but political posturing. So I'm going to put the counter argument to it in my amendment. The bottom line is that our economy is dreadful on the Isle of Wight, not just because of the pandemic, but because of the dreadful government we've had to endure, led by the Conservatives and supported for five years, and let's not forget, by the Lib Dems for 11 years, and by a Conservative Council for the last four years. It refers to regeneration, and frankly, the money we've spent on a regeneration. What have we got for it? Councillor, Councillor Stewart will give you a long list of, of hopes and aspirations, but what has actually happened in terms of regeneration of this island? The island has lost nearly a hundred million pounds in funding of the local authority, which has taken out of our local economy. It is destroying public services, both on the island and nationally, to be frank. And all in all, I think just to be clapping yourselves on the back as if you're so as, a, as if everything is fantastic. It's just a joke. All the stuff in the third paragraph, the, the, the third paragraph regarding the sound and robust risk being approach to financial money. Well, that's cobblers for somebody like me, for somebody in the residence that I represent. It's an absolute load of cobblers. And finally, I've inserted something you've already noticed you're going to start starting to get rid of the island deal. You know, it's certainly we're not interested in the six million. We're dead chuffed with 50 grand, you know, chicken field, absolute chicken feed for a for a survey that's already been done. I don't know how many times in my 30 years on the Isle of Wight and conservative governments and it normally is conservative governments pay no attention because we have useless conservative MPs. I know you're not going to vote for my amendment. I know Councillor Hollis will be in like a shot to rubbish me and et cetera, et cetera. And the usual concern of attack Jeff Brody. And the name is Brody, Councillor Hollis, not lovely. Brody, get it into your head, please, and do me the courtesy of it. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Brody. Do you have a seconder for your motion? You had it earlier. Councillor Jones Evans. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Smart, would you like to turn your camera off, please? Oh. Councillor Jones Evans, would you like to speak as the seconder, please? Hello. Oh, yes. So thank, thank you, Chairman. And uh, yes, I mean, I'm reading through the motion. Those it was that paragraph that that really did um, uh, bother me as well. I mean, the rest of it, you know, no one can argue with really. And um, so I'm, ple I'm pleased that it has come forward. I mean, just, just really, just after an, an evening of I've been listening to uh, of uh, acrimonious discussion and uh, name calling at times and a lot of political uh, posturing. Um, here we are now. Everyone wants to come together and under one banner. And I just wish it was, as Carl Love said earlier, just wish it was like that a bit more often. That's really all I've got to say. Thank you. George is back. Hello, I'm back. I am back Hello. now. Hello, Chairman. Hope you enjoyed many... the trip wherever you went. This is like going through an earthquake. <laughs> mm. How many is left? Uh, Councillor John Evans. This is open for debate after yeah. Councillor John Evans. We... Oh, ch ch Chairman, perhaps you didn't hear. I just, I was only very brief in what I said, and I. That's I fished... right. Yeah, we must. More is everything you said. Could you start you again? Everything. Yes. You missed everything I said. Yeah, if you start again, uh, please. 
Well, um, well I, I, I don't know, Chair. I heard it all. Yeah, oh, I no. did as well. I, I, I couldn't do anything. Yeah. OK. If, um, and then in that case, Councillor, Councillor Stewart, you ask to speak next, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, To wait for it to go live for the public review. So thank Sorry. you, Chair. Um, if I'd be very explicit, I don't accept Councillor Brodie's amendment because he's done what exactly what I tried not to do, um, which is reverse it into some sort of political debate. And it's an irony for me that we've had councillors across the chamber talking about how we want to work together. And then the first opportunity that comes along right at the end of the evening when we've dealt with the budget, etc. And we end up in a non working together situation. My impression of what I'm trying to achieve here is to send a message to government that we can work together on this island for what we feel we deserve and that we're happy to do whatever it takes to get our island deal across the line and do whatever is necessary to meet their requirements. And at the same time, and I accepted Councillor Lilly's suggestion that it isn't just this Isle of Wight Council. Um, obviously, we are the lead but that we can also work with our town and parish councils uh, and community councils, because that's what we've just been doing for the last 12 months, keeping our island safe. Um, uh, now, I hadn't seen Councillor Brodie's amendment. He did send me a, 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 an email at some point this afternoon. It might have been just before the meeting or even during the meeting, suggesting I withdraw my motion, but I couldn't see the point or need. And I'm not actually criticising anybody. I'm looking for us all to work together and and get this get this this uh, support there, which is sort of being offered to us, and we need to go forward. Um, I can't accept Councillor Brody's motion amendment because it's full of austerity obsessed conservative government comments uh, and all the other. He can see what he's put in it, and that is not that is definitely not what I wanted to put out there with the council's support. So I um, that's what I'm going to say because I think he knows what he's done, and I do publicly. Um, want to express my sympathies to Councillor Smart because I think she was going to talk about all the hard work that her um, partner had done to secure something for this island over many years. Uh, and I, well, I'd like to think that she was hopefully going to see this as a way forward, but I'm not going to prejudge what she was going to say because she got upset. And I don't think there's a councillor in this room would not have had sympathy for her. And if there is, I would wish to disassociate myself from them. Leader, Harry Reese. Yeah, no. I know it was. I didn't want to mention the name in public, Wayne. Yeah. He's oh, so. for years and had a lot of respect from not all councillors for the work he did trying to get funding from the EU. He was yeah. good. Yeah, sorry. Uh, so, can I remind so my comments, Chair? Um, Thank thank you. you. I'll wait to the end of the year. Uh, thank you, Leader. We have got right. two people to speak. But just a reminder, we've got to finish at nine o'clock and we have two votes to take. So can I take Councillor Lilly first, if you can make a the brief, please? Uh, well, firstly, um, yes, um, my heart goes out to Shirley because Harry was a, a ardent campaigner to get an island deal or an island act. And he campaigned for years and years and years for that. And it's something that I um, have also uh, campaigned on as well. Uh, w within that, so I think we do need to recognise Harry in that yep. in that regard. I would I I feel very uncomfortable because there is elements of Councillor Brodie's amendment that I agree with, not the the political statement or whatever, but I do feel that the wording in the third paragraph I felt uncomfortable about because I do feel that doesn't necessarily totally unify but i was willing to accept that in good grace if um town and council and community councils were recognized the key is is we've got to be passionate about creating jobs on this island and we also need to get as much money into it and we only do that by working together Across party, I'm not in a political party, but across the community, and we who have to come to to do that in a small way. A Newport community, Carisbrook and Newport Council, 
goes and comes together. So does Ride uh, Town Council come together in a, in a consensus. We have got to stop this kind of killing each other of different kind of views. And on this issue of employment, that is why I will not support the amendment. I will actually support the main motion as a way that we actually have got to get over this division Thank and you. start putting the community together. And we need jobs and create jobs. And we need innovators to create jobs. Stop this politicising. That is, it that is, is awful. Emotion. That is an emotion, the original motion. Thank you, Councillor Lilly. Councillor Stevens, if you can make a brief, please. We are running out of time and there are other speakers as well. Two words or three words. OK. We, we need to be unified. Let's show it as uni, unification, not not just of uh, the uh, administration, no matter which colour or which creed they are. Let's get together and look at how we can best present the welfare of the community of the Isle of Wight and create jobs, create a, a, a regeneration scheme that is second to none. But we need to do it not just with, with one party, but throughout all the councillors within the chamber and indeed the town and parish councils and business. It's no good going to Westminster or wherever on just a single party ticket. Let's go together. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Hollis. Uh, yes, thank you, Chairman. Uh, obviously, uh, Councillor Stevens doesn't actually understand democracy. Uh, and if a party or a group is elected to lead, and that's what they do, and the others then um, criticise or join in or whatever. But you have a leader. You always have a leader. And uh, that's what it is. I think Councillor Brady's motion is the most political load of rubbish I've ever seen. I would completely disregard it. And I would go with the leaders, oh, the, the, the leader of the council's motion, get on with it and just do it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Wallace. Um, I think we need to go to the vote on the Councillor, Councillor Barry is next. Just quickly, Councillor Barry. Yeah, thank you for that. Uh, as someone who's been dealing with this island of power, extra money and all the rest, for a long, long time. Close Waterhouse Cooper did think that we put thousands of pounds into it and they would get another 50,000 pounds to, to go through it all again. The only the only time we ever got any money from government, Harry Rees was there, Shirley Smart was there, Labour was there, Andy Sutton was there. We all went together to speak to the then, what was his name, Steve, Forgot his name now. The, the, the Labour Minister for the Island of Part, he listened to us. We put up a good case and we got millions out of it. Since that, we've got nothing, only empty promises. If you're waiting for a bloody Boris Johnson to give you anything, you can wait a long time. I feel sorry for all the work Harry done and all the rest. It's all been shoved aside and ignored. And then they were going to reinvent the wheel and spend another 50,000 on something which we won't get. If they intended to give the Isle of Wight any more money, why would they give us 50,000 pounds to come up with the question? Ridiculous. Thank you, Thank you Councillor Barry. I think we've debated this enough. We're running out of time. We're going to go to the vote on Councillor Brodie's amendment. So if we're quick, we could get the vote in. So on Councillor Brodie's amendment, Councillor Abraham, how would you vote? Okay. Thank you. Councillor Bertie? Against. Councillor Beston? Against. Councillor Brading? Against. Councillor Chapman? Not yet. Against. Against. Councillor Church? Against. Councillor Hastings? Against. Councillor Henry? Against. Councillor Hobart? Against. Councillor Hollis? Against. Councillor Hutchinson? Against. Councillor Kilpatrick? Against. Councillor Mosdale? Against. Councillor Nicholson. Against. Councillor Outlaw. Against. Councillor Pease. Against. Councillor Price. No. Action. 
it does say it's got connection problems. Councillor Quirk. Against. Councillor Tindall. Against. Councillor Ward. Against. Councillor Whittle. Against. Councillor Andre. Against. Councillor Downer. Against. Councillor Fuller. Against. Councillor Howe. Against. Councillor Lilly. Councillor Lilly. We'll come back to you. Against. Okay. okay. Councillor Medland. Four. Councillor PC Wilcox. As I can't read it and I don't know anything about it, I have to abstain because I can't. I don't know what it said. Thank you. Councillor Jones Evans. Four. Councillor Love. You've got connection I'm problems. Sorry, I, I've got connection problems. I've missed most of the debate, so I'm going to have to dis, um, abstain. I apologize. Thank you. <laughs> Councillor Brody. Four. Councillor Stevens. Abstain. Then Councillor Barry. Against. Councillor Garrett. Against. Councillor Mirwell. Against. Councillor Perks. Uh, against. I vote against. Councillor Smart. Oh, but could I please, please, please apologise? It's the first time I've broken down since May and I do apologise. No, sure. um, I'll phone you later. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Stewart. Against. Yes, thank you very much, councillors. While we wait for the result. Well, well, yeah, or abstain. The thing is, you put always political stuff. Councillor Stevens, it is your microphone is on, Councillor Stevens. Well, no, he is. Councillor Downer. Oh. I do apologise, Chairman. That's OK. That's OK. Thank you. On that, on amendment uh, for this, four people, four votes against 31 and three abstentions. So that amendment falls. We will go back to Councillor, Councillor Stewart's original motion. Anybody wish to speak? Councillor can I suggest we go straight to vote, Chair? Yeah? Go straight to the vote. Thank you. Yeah. We go to the vote on the original motion. Councillor Abraham. Four. Four. Councillor Bertie. Four. Councillor Beston. Four. Councillor Brading. Four. Councillor Chapman. Four. Councillor Churchman. Four. Councillor Hastings. Four. Councillor Henry. Four. Councillor Hobart. Four. Councillor Hollis. Four. Councillor Hutchinson. Four. Councillor Kilpatrick. Four. Councillor Mostel. Four. Councillor Nicholson. Four. Councillor Outlaw. Four. Councillor Pease. Four. Councillor Price. Connection problems. Councillor Quirk. Four. Four. Councillor Tyndall. Four. Councillor Ward. Four. Councillor Whittle. Four. Councillor Andre. Four. Councillor Downer. Four. Councillor Fuller. Four. Councillor Howe. Four. Councillor Lilly. Four. Councillor Midland. Four. Councillor B.C. Wilcox. I appreciate it, right? Yes, yes, our uh, four. Councillor Jones Evans. Councillor Jones Evans. Four. Four. Councillor Love. Yes, four. Councillor Brody. Against, proudly. Councillor Stevens. Um, Abstain. Councillor Barry. Against. against. Councillor Garrett. Four. Uh, Councillor Murrell. Councillor Murrell. Councillor Perks. Oh. I'm poor as well. Councillor Smart. Oh. Councillor Stewart. Oh. Councillor Stewart. Oh. Oh. Sorry, poor. I'd uh, muted. 
Thank you. Uh, Councillor Barry, we got you. Uh, Councillor Stevens, abstained. Uh, That's it. Did, did you get mine? Councillor Mirwell. Yes, we got yours, Councillor Barry. No, Councillor Mirwell, we didn't get. Uh, four. Four. Thank you. That is everybody. Apart from Councillor Price. Councillor Price? He's still struggling. Thank you. So we call for the results of the votes. That's the final item on the agenda. Oh, members' questions. Right. 35 votes. The result is 35 for, two against, and one abstention. That motion carries. Thank you very much, councillors. Uh, it is nearly nine o'clock. We are going to the last item, which is members' question time to the leader. There's going to be no written questions submitted. And in the one minute we got left, does anybody want to ask the leader a question? If not, we can put it close to the meeting. No questions? Councillor Barry. Thank you. When did, when did the RLOI Council take the decision? You mute. You mute it again, Councillor. Just unmute yourself. That's it. Yeah. No, no. Again. Right. Okay. I'll omit it. When did the Isle of No, you mute it again. <laughs> you keep clicking on it. Take your hands off. You mute it. Just click once on it. It's nine o'clock. Right. I'm afraid councillors. When, when did the Isle of Wight Council decide not to extend the ALNB? Can I interrupt you? Councillor Barry, can I interrupt you? It is nine o'clock. We have to get it in the meeting. It is finished. Can we vote on the continu continuation? We can't. It's against uh, the rules. It's against the rules. We voted for that yeah. oh, for four years sake. ago. We have to close the meeting. I'm afraid. Trust we've had four months. So there's always there's always next Council, month. Councillor Barry, yep. There's always next yeah. month and you will get a written response. You all live that now. Thank you. Uh, this is our last meeting of uh, this current council. Um, it's been a pleasure working with you. And uh, I hope to see you in the next term. Thank you very much, councillors. Thank, thank you, Chair. Thank you. And thank, thank you to the uh, Vice Chair as well. Good luck. Yeah, and good luck. George. See you. Thank you. Bye, everyone.